Excellent. This meeting is called back to order. Um, we are now continuing our discussion of item 12D. This is the one-year extension request for the construction of a public plaza for the purchase and development agreement with Ocean One Boynton LLC for the Ocean One project. We recently heard from the public as well as the uh, representative of the applicant, Ms. Miskell, as well as our council. At this time, I'd like to uh, turn to my colleagues here on the dais for their questions and comments. And I see that board member Cruz is ready. Yes, uh, board member. Mayor, I was just, I mean, chair, I just wanted to ask, um, I know we're in the middle of digital public comment. Do we, did we have anybody else waiting to do digital public comment before we lost connection? I, I don't know, did we? Ms. Kerfman? We had only ever had that one comment. It was just that one yeah, person, right? Correct. So, no, thank you for verifying board board member Cruz. Um, so uh, board member Cruz, if you'd like to begin, if you have any questions for the applicant or staff. I will go ahead and ask a question to the attorney. What legal options do we have according to the situation today? So the provision of the agreement that the applicant is in default of is the failure to construct a public park. So that's or the, the public plaza. So that's really what they've come to ask for the extension for. And that's sort of what's before the board tonight. Um, and so the next step, if the board were to determine that it did not wish to grant an extension would be for the CRA to issue a notice of default. Um, under the terms of the contract, the applicant would then, sorry, the, the other party would then have the option to um, request an extension to um, either be, begin that effort or ask for something else, and then we would move from there. Um, the CRA could act to try and enforce the contract to the fullest extent the terms allowed. Um, that might involve all manner of legal action. It, it would really be up to the board's direction, but the, the specific item before you tonight is really the, the default based on the failure to construct the park, the public plaza, and commence construction on that point. And again, just to go through the history again, this is something that was, I don't want to use the word given, but it was there was a portion of public land that was provided to the previous owner, not the current owner to the prior owner um, with the purpose of potentially constructing a public park. And so now, was there any sort of legal protection at that point for that piece of land? So there, there is a right of first refusal clause that was included in this development agreement. Um, there is nothing explicit as to a reverter or anything like that. The, the purpose of this, um, development agreement and it states it explicitly in the contract was for development of a mixed use agreement. So that is that is the purpose of the agreement. Um, and so there is no sort of clawback provision in, in the way that we have in some other agreements, but there there was a right of first refusal and then um, just the normal contract protections for default and breach. Can you explain to me, because I'm not an attorney, what does right of first refusal mean? means if in this particular case, if there was an offer to buy the particular section of property, um, if, if some third party had come in and offered to, to make an offer, the CRA would have had an opportunity to purchase the land back. Um, oh. That was specific only, only to that specific piece of land. Um, that right of first refusal did not apply if the offer was for a larger piece of land. Um, and as as Ms. Miskell has said, that the, the property is, has um, it has a larger footprint at this point. And so um, that that clause really is not before you. That was one of the protections in the agreement, but that isn't the issue that we have today. Thank you. That's that's all I have for questions right now. I'll move we'll on to it. Well, thank you, board member. Let's go to Vice Chair uh, Tarkin. I'll save my comments for less. That's all right. That's fine. I got a lot to say, so we'll okay. make, we'll make sure everyone else has a chance. All right. Sounds good. Let's go to board member Hay. Uh, yes. I Assuming that we approve the extension, uh, Manu, the next step would be to come back with what, a site plan or something? That's correct. The site plan's so, on your agenda next week. So it's been vetted, it's been reviewed, it's been analyzed by your staff, and you'll get to see it next week. And we'll be discussing a lot of the items that came up this evening then. Is it possible for you guys to meet with the owners before that meeting 
and have a dialogue about the parking. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I just gave out a couple of my business cards and I have more, so I'm ready to do that. We can do that before next week. Uh, we can also meet with TWE because I know that you've seen our site plan and they've provided comments and maybe we can assemble here together and come up with some collective solutions that will help the neighborhood. Would the owners who are here feel that you can rally the other owners to meet uh, with the developers, developer before next Tuesday? If, if I could ask that question. Yes, you can. And uh, if, and you know, can, if, I mean, a those of up. you who spoke, I would, uh, would you please come? So again, I would just like to just remind everybody that to the extent that this relates to how you will address this as the CRA, this is an appropriate conversation. If this is going to turn into what you would like to see next week, I need to cut you off. Council understood. Understood. Okay. I do have the ability to mass email the ownership at Marina Village. Good. Then that would be my recommendation. And sir, could you just state your name for the record? Rick Dunstan. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. All right, board member. All right, board member Kelly. Kind of have a little bit to say. Um, I guess I, my one of my questions is: so this agreement is in place, and in exchange for a dollar, we the CRA back in the day. Um, gave this land so that a public plaza would be established. Was there any, you may know this, Bonnie, was there any requirement as far as the size or what that public plaza was going to be? Um, yes, and I want to correct something. The, the goal was not for a plaza to be built. The goal okay. was for the mixed-use project, and I think Catherine um, tried to say that be built. They did not want the plaza. It was not intended to be a plaza. They could have made it a plaza themselves if they thought that that was a value. That was used as motivation for the former owner to get going on his project. They did not want to be in the position that we all are now, where years later, it didn't get built. Taxes didn't get added. Um, services didn't weren't provided, they didn't have a beautiful project to look at. Unfortunately, you know, for whatever reasons, the former owner didn't build it, he didn't build it. Um, our, my buyer, my client, uh, not my buyer, my client, the buyer of that project um, has not done that. They immediately got a project through the process, which it is a large parcel and it is a complex parcel, but they did so in an expedited manner but it was never intended to be a, a, a plaza. But there is, um, on the, the purchase and development agreement, there is an exhibit that shows what it would look like if they didn't build their project timely, if they didn't uh, commence. And it, in, and it referenced, it has a sketch and it references some, some um, seating and a meandering path and some trees. We can bring it up on the... On the screen, I believe we have that in attachment G one. G or H, I think, if my memory serves. And Ms. Rosemel, do you concur with this assessment? I do. To the best of my recollection, the plaza was put in there as a motivational piece. It is called out separately as an exhibit. I think it's exhibit E to the agreement, unlike the site plan, which I believe was exhibit B. Um, so that, that was the original purpose of it. It was put in place so that if construction did not That's start it. within a specific time, um, this plaza would be constructed as sort of an, an, in, an in lieu of public good of, of, as opposed to the development of the project to, again, to spur it along. Um, it's also, I believe, was a, was a relatively passive space with um, benches and horizontal pathways and, and things of that nature. Um, Council, I'm sorry, Board Member Kelly, please continue, I'm sorry. So if I understand correctly, at this point, this little plaza or this little park should be but I mean, if, if yes, yeah, so right. so pursuant to the the pursuant to the agreement and and the various extensions and negotiations that have happened over the years, 
um, I believe it was March 9th was the date for, for this to, to be coming into play. Um, that has not happened. And so the request tonight is for an extension to um, so that the developer would not be required to put this in as they are processing a site plan and other whatever other permits they are seeking, um, that they not be constructing a park that I believe would not match the, the site plan that will be coming. That's correct. And there was a further problem that we did not envision. This was a default provision. It was a fallback provision. It wasn't the desired um, uh, interest of the contract. What no one thought about at the time that this was added, this obligation, was that we had an approved site plan. And in order to build that, you need another approved site plan. And the city doesn't allow you to have two site plans for the same property. So to do that, we would have had to eradicate the old plan, which obviously the CRA did not want to do that because they wanted a building. And if we had to do that today, the site plan that is currently pending and about to be presented to you could not go forward because the north end of the site would conflict with that and we need a site plan for that. So it was a quandary that we're in and they did, a, the former owner did not want to ask for an extension. They tried to apply for a permit, submitted the permit fee and it could not be processed by the city because we didn't have a site plan for this passive plaza. So it was a real quandary. Right, so, so my, I guess what I'm, sort of getting at an understanding is that the CRA is not in a position to get anything back per se, because it, except for this. There is no contract provision that would allow that. I, I don't want to speak as to whether, you know, pursuit of an entire lawsuit could potentially, but it, but it is not right. one of the contract terms. Reverter is not one of the contract terms. Right. So, 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 we're we're kind of in a I don't want to say in a in a position where you know this we don't want this park option I mean that we have and so an extension is really the only option but what should the city or the CRA ask for or what is the developer willing to offer? the CRA in return for an extension because you know here we are being asked for a one year extension and I and I understand and I and I want to you know I I understand we're talking about a, a new owner a different developer the previous one failed to do what he promised to do for a very long time to the CRA and to the city and here we are so I understand that and I want to be understanding of that, that we're talking about a new person and a new owner. But they also knew that attached to this project that they're purchasing, that there was this plot of land that they were getting from the CRA at nothing. Um, and so I'm asking you, Bonnie, what is the developer willing to do for the CRA and willing to do for the residents in exchange for this extension well there should be my client on the line i'm hoping that he is because i don't have that response for you we didn't discuss that but if jordan thaler is on the line and he can weigh in that would be helpful because i'm sorry i'm at a loss i mean other than a hundred million plus project you know i don't know but perhaps we can get him can, can, can you guys hear me there he is Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Th thanks so much. Uh, Jordan Thaler, um, VP of Acquisitions for Hyperion. Um, well, first of all, I think Bundy did a good job of just explaining the history and, and where we are right now. And um, we are requesting this one year extension because that is pretty much the quickest we can work. And we have been working at quite an expedited time frame since we bought this um, just a little over a year ago and um, just a little bit of history we we submitted our first sort of site plan approval during this process in august so you know it, it, we understand that the city really wants something here and it has been lacking in the past and 
Um, we want to build this as quickly as possible, but we also don't want to promise something that, you know, just knowing development that we can't really achieve in a short period of time. So 12 months will give us enough time. Keep in mind that what we've put together is site plan approval, working with our architects and civil engineers. We need to go to mechanical engineers. We need to go to electrical engineers. We need to do a lot of drawings that take a good amount of time. And a lot of it would not necessarily be in our control. You know, we are submitting the permits, but then the, the city has their process and they take and they take time. So I, I suppose what I can offer is constant, whether that's every two months or so, you know, a, a meeting, and I'm happy to do so with the CRA, with staff, just to keep them informed to make sure that they understand that we are moving forward and that we are putting everything um, forward in terms of our resources to make sure that the permits are getting done, that we are not uh, you know, just, just sitting around because that does nobody any good and especially uh, not us. Um, so, so that's really just where we are coming from and what I can offer. But you know, this is a very honest request of you know, this is how long it's going to take us to really get, get these permits and to build a project that we all want to build. You know, the other comment I think that Jordan didn't share with you is the first project that came in was for half the site. Um, it was a two-phase project and it was for half the value of the site or much less actually. Um, the, it included a second phase that was pre hopefully a hotel. That was what they were trying or striving for. And then a condominium. Um, but that might never have been built and there was no obligation for that to be built. What they're coming in with is a, a project that is valued at at least double what the first one was and probably triple based on cost of construction. So you're getting everything for the entire block, which is twice the revenue that the CRI could ever have hoped for by now. It might've been coming in now, but it likely would not have been. So in that, to that extent, there is real revenue value for this project because this owner is willing to do the whole thing, not phase it, not wait five or 10 years, um, which is, and they have not asked for anything. We have no, you know, we're, we're, we're not asking for any special dispensation. This owner paid for that land. Should they have, you know, you're right, um, Commissioner Kelly, they had open eyes, they came in, they did their due diligence, they knew that the former owner had a problem, but they also thought that their project would be a much better project, would be valued much greater, and that that would overcome the the mistakes made by the prior owner. Um, but, you know, they are doing as much as they can in a very short time and are are more than happy to be collaborative with not only the CRA, but also the neighbors to see if we can come up with some solutions to their problems as well. Um, in this, in the new project, the new site plan, I know there is uh, there are lots of public open spaces. Um, can you just briefly remind me from the previous site plan compared to this one, um, how do they differ as far as public spaces? So the first plan, the old plan, which maybe we can get up on the screen perhaps, Twee, I don't know, but I'll talk about it, had no open public spaces. They had open space, but they weren't public. They weren't proposing to do anything public. They were providing for some artwork on the corner of Boynton and um, Federal, and there was a little carve out for what they called that little area. Um, but really nothing else was intended to be open to the public. Again, open, but not open to the public. And it was only, and, and Jordan may be able to give you the exact number. I didn't bring my plan with me, but I think it was somewhere between three and a half percent and 4%. Uh, it, it was about four and a half to 5%. Per okay, year. thank you. And, and um, just to be clear, we have right now 39% of our site area that is usable open space by either um, a, a public plaza for the, um, 
for the retail at the south end, um, three very large open spaces along US 1. Um, and for significantly uh, large on on ocean. Um, and so it, it, the, there's no comparison um, there. It just, you know, it was really designed for um, for views, really, truthfully, both internally and externally. You know, what you see walking by, what you see driving by. What we're talking about. And they're all usable spaces. So, so that's something that the former owner had no interest in doing and had no obligation to do it. Um, my next question is for staff. And it's on that, you know, I guess my question is, sort of how we even got here in the first place this little piece of land i know it seems big and very useful but it's my understanding or and correct me if i'm wrong that there was little use for it which is why it made sense at the time to allow to get into this agreement in the first place but can you just clarify that i really don't have again not being here back in 2016, 17, I don't know what the major motivation was. And I really, I don't think staff has ever done an analysis of what half an acre in this particular zoning could do. So I really can't tell you, but I know the intention was, as usual, the CRA usually will contribute land or other resources to build the ultimate build out to activate this downtown area. Um, and I think just as Catherine indicated, the public plaza was just a motivation should the developer not build the mixed use that could be a public benefit of open space there. But I can't really tell you what was or what the value was based on the dollars and the, the land then versus now. Okay, thank you. Um, can, can I defer until closing comments? Absolutely. Um, Vice Chair Turkin, I know you've been uh, waiting for quite some time to hmm. to express your thoughts. Sure. Let's turn to you. Um, so a lot of good stuff has been said already. I think um, I think what we're talking about, what, first of all, what I'm concerned about is we're, we're bringing up another site plan. There is no other site plan. The site plan is presented before us that has 271 units. What's concerning is that this is up for commission next week but could not be if there was an extension not granted. So that that process, you know, there's there's something that, you know, ills my stomach there. Um, and so I'm very concerned about that. And I keep hearing this plan, this new site plan, it's not approved yet. So why are we talking about a site plan that's not approved that would be contingent on an extension of this request? The other thing, you know, there was, um, you know, we, we discussed you know, we had passed in the past, you know, height variance, and um, there was no problem of, uh, you know, uh, you know, outreach there and discussing there. And so when I hear that, you know, this is a new owner and we just purchased the property, the property was purchased in 2021. There's been time, there's been time to get this done. So I don't have any pity for complacency. I don't have any pity, um, you know, for not holding yourself accountable to get stuff done because it's been shown and you can look in all the public meetings that there has been uh, discussion around this. In terms of the land, this is a half an acre that was designated and has been defaulted. And so I believe we could pursue legal action in default of this and actually go back and try to acquire this land. What would that process look like? So the board could, I would like to clarify something, which is that the site plan approval, there's no code contingency that it matched this agreement. If they were to process a site plan, uh, it might, they might end up defaulting on this agreement, but there is no, that the, this agreement is entirely separate from your code review of the site plan. To um, prosecute default under this agreement, again, the, the first step would be to provide them notice. They would have 30 days at that point. They do have the right under the contract to request an extension to reasonably fulfill the condition. The condition that they would be attempting to fulfill would be um, work towards provision of the public plaza. So that um, that would be sort of the next step. If the board so directed, we could enter into following that and, and failing those um, 
failing cure of that breach, the, the board could direct your legal counsel and staff to pursue a lawsuit. Um, and at that point, we would have to do a full evaluation of all of the claims that could be brought. Um, again, there is no reverter provision in this agreement. We would have to do a full analysis of, of all of the options for the claims that we could bring at that point. Um, but it is not typically in a land um, transaction, again, here where the purpose is to provide a mixed use project and there is no reverter clause, and we'd have to do a full analysis as to whether getting the land back would be a viable option under this contract. So missing reverter clause seems to be a common theme with our predecessors. Um, so that land is, again, half an acre, right? I don't want to misspeak, half an acre. And we provided that to the previous client um, for how much? I think it was a thousand a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. So we have an appraisal that we did November tenth of last year, appraising that lot for one point seven six four million dollars. And we're hearing outcry from the community um, about parking. I think this is an opportunity where we leverage a default to provide some sort of public benefit or parking because I don't see any public use or public benefit now and we're hearing from our residents. Board Member Cruz, you are the uh, queen of parking. You've brought this up many times in the past and I think that this is an opportunity for us again to do the right thing and leave a good legacy like you have mentioned many times before, Board Member Hay we're about legacy like we've discussed when we were looking at the sheriff's office and so you know for us to give away the farm the cow the barn and everything for a thousand dollars due to complacency is not in the best public interest you know it um i i just can't not get behind that the other thing i want to bring to attention is that what what does this half acre mean for this project for the interest for this developer right half an acre i think this is zoned at 80 units per acre and if you you know 40 units 40 units probably is two hundred thousand dollars maybe per unit you're looking at about eight million dollars of value for them and so for us to for us to not do anything based on the default of someone else's actions. And I understand there's a new owner and, and you know, no harm, no foul to them, but we're all held accountable for our actions. And don't think twice that if the roles were reversed, we wouldn't be threatened with a lawsuit. We've seen that many times before, and I'm sick of that. I'm sick of having our lunch eaten, and I cannot get behind an approval for this extension without some sort of some sort of charrette, some sort of community workshop in order to come to a mutual benefit for everyone, especially for $1.8 million. $1 million. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see the developer provide parking, you know, a couple hundred spaces. I'm not sure what's feasible, what's realistic, but we've heard from the community, you know, we've seen this empty lot forever. And the other thing I want to bring up that no one's talked about is how do we know it's going to get built? This could be flipped right where's the financing where's the financing is there cra dollars we don't know and so you know i i i would imagine that what may be happening is a look and in interest to increase entitlements and then acquire those and then flip this property and then what and so I, I don't think it's good government. I don't think it's good for the taxpayers. I don't think it's right to move forward with this extension without providing a public use. And so I, I just wanna leave again with my colleagues. You know, we've heard from people that live here, right? And um, we've heard what they want. And I think it's our job to provide that. That's what we took this oath for. That's what we worked so hard to get elected for is to do the right thing by what the people want, not by, you know, one, one, one interest. And, you know, I want to see something there, you know, I don't want to stop anything, but I don't want the actions of our predecessors to identify who we are. And so that's why I think this is crucial and important to either make some type of amendment, some type of um, uh, agreement is, is to provide 
you know, public parking use before we move forward with any extension or just don't move forward with the extension, get our land back and build a parking garage. I mean, that's what, that, Marina Village is crazy. We focus on economic development, but how can we invite people to our city when I live half a mile down the street, I can't even park there, you know? I mean, I need to walk a little more and get a little heavy, but you know, I, I think it's important for not just people who live in the east side in this district, but people who live on the west side, district four, district one, right? Where are they going to park? And and I see an opportunity for us to do the right thing. And I challenge y'all to do the right thing and not miss the ball like it has been done in the past in regards to parking and also to make sure that we leave a good legacy, not one down the road where people are complaining about us. And we've done so well. And I just asked my colleagues to uh, continue the good work we've done. All right, thank you, Vice Chair. That was very well said, and thank you to my colleagues. Uh, just a few thoughts of my own, and uh, I think there's so much to unpack here and so much to discuss that I almost don't know where to begin. Um, number one, if it's not abundantly clear, let me just make it clear now that it is not this commission that, quote unquote, gave away that land, all right? we That was not a deal that we made. Uh, this is a situation like Town Square uh, that we have, in fact, inherited. And because that had happened in the past, that then became private property, and as such has been sold to a new person, right? So I just wanna make sure we've established those facts. It is what it is. I think what I heard from the residents today resonate. You're absolutely correct. We have parking challenges in our downtown, and we need that to sustain our local economy. There's, there's no question about that. Um, so I'm gonna be supporting those kinds of ideas but I also want to say a couple of things around that, which is, um, Vice Chair, you know, for example, if we do not approve to extend, let me just say, I mean, we don't have to do a whole year, but if we don't even allow this to make it to the city commission, where we can discuss the site plan, where we can discuss density and height and all of those topics and parking, if it doesn't even get to that stage where we can have those conversations, how can we ask, how can we add as conditions of approval until we get to that meeting. And so that's kind of a catch 22 because my general belief is that generally speaking, people wanna see restaurants. They want nice places to go. They just wanna make sure that there's parking. They wanna make sure that the benefit is also for the public um, and to make sure that the density is not outrageous. Again, I've heard this phrase said so many times, we don't wanna be like Fort Lauderdale, for example. That is not the intent here. So we're kind of in a catch-22 situation. Um, and at the same time, I can tell you, I don't want that land vacant uh, because sitting there, you know, collecting garbage and whatnot, nobody wins. That is not what makes us a destination. That's not something that residents would enjoy just sitting there looking at nothing. Uh, so I think if this item makes it to the city commission, then we can ask those questions about parking uh, and, and all those related items like height and density. Um, let me also try just, and I know it's not a popular opinion, but I want to try to look at the flip side, just, just for the sake of conversation. This is a new developer, okay? They didn't get this land for free. They did buy it. They bought it from the previous person, okay? That, that's just a matter of fact. They really did buy it. If, if, if you or whomever were that person, you have inherited the troubles or the sins of the past, if you will. And they've agreed, and there's no question that they're aware of this, they have agreed to take that on. But some of the problems I'm hearing is parking with the neighboring buildings, right? I've heard this well before this item ever came up. There are parking issues in the surrounding buildings. So, you know, just for the sake of conversation, on the flip side, um, you know, if you were the person that wanted to build something, whatever it was, now you are being asked to solve the problems of all your neighbors, okay? Now, as a public official, I'm gonna side with the public. There is no doubt that there is need for parking, okay, obviously. Um, but I just wanted to offer that on the flip side for the sake of the conversation. So again, you know, I'm not gonna reject the extension because if I do, we'll never get to ask those questions. We'll never be able to attach anything as conditions of approval. Um, and so that's where I stand, but I agree with you. We need these 
we need these items to be addressed. But let's get to that conversation first. Um, let's go with board member Kelly. Uh, kind of to your end, Chair, you know, and also to Vice Chair, you know, we we have, a, you know, at this point, I feel, and, and Catherine, this might be more directed towards you, um, you know, yes, to get to the next step, we have to, we have to do this, but can we make this, can we put any conditions on this mm -hmm. that say, and, and this is a question also for the developer, you know, you were talking about public parking and I, and I, there's also a, a big question mark as to what the definition of public parking is. And to every person, it's different. To me, I think public parking is the public who's going to go to the places at that building, that's public parking. They're using those facilities or they're using surrounding facilities. To some people, it's a public parking garage where anyone can go and spend $5 and park and they can go wherever they want throughout the city for as long as they want and they're, they're paying it's public parking. So there's also that big question mark as to what and and it's different for any person that you talk to as far as what public parking is is public parking to you the public's parking lot is that public parking no it's patron parking you're patronizing that store so so that is a big question mark as to what exactly we're using to define public parking and what the residents and what the public are looking for are you just wanting, and this is kind of just thinking out loud also to myself, are you just wanting to make sure that this building is self-sustaining and the parking that is needed for the restaurants and the stores and the shops has adequate parking for the public to use so that they're not then parking in other places in the city? Or is this truly meant, or is the intention truly that you want there to be public parking? Council. Okay, so I will I will address a couple of those things in turn. Um, first, they are currently in default of the agreement. We are attempting a negotiation out of that. In the past, the developer has paid for extensions. I believe twenty thousand dollars for two years was the past payment. So this is an opportunity to do that. Regarding whether the parking is adequate to serve the development that is going in, that is a question for your city staff. Right. Correct. And so that's that will be before you next week. Now, if the CRA, as an incentive to get out of the position of default, wanted to ask for something that was extra code, that is something that can be done. And what that specific ask is, and whether the developer would choose to um, acquiesce to that or would choose to uh, take the risk of whatever legal action the CRA may bring or, or noticing of default would be something, you know, that could be further discussed that, that you know, we could do here. I, you could certainly direct your, your staff and legal team to um, consider that offline, but there's anything that would be, but please understand that if you do request a change in parking, um, that would have the potential of delaying the site plan coming before the city because those types of things are considered at site plan. Um, and so if, the goal is a fast project. Please understand that asking for a change in parking would have an impact on that. And so that's just something to consider. Um, but, but to answer your big question, we are here because there is a, a position of default. The CRA may ask for certain things to get out of that position of default. Again, um, the past developer was agreeable to paying for an extension um, The previous uh, at previous meetings. Um, they had actually requested to purchase their way out of the public plaza obligation altogether. Their, um, the difference in the amount that it was valued at to the CRA and to the developer was quite far apart, and so that didn't work out. But but it is we are in a position where the CRA um, can ask for things if if that's the desire. And and all right, one second. Board member Hay did have his hand up next, so let's go to board member Hay, then we'll go around. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really agree with both the chair and the vice chair on this particular matter. That's why I originally stated um, the conversation between the uh, developers and uh, and the owners to have the discussion about parking to see um, can there be some um, 
compromise or agreement or whatever you want to call it before uh, next Tuesday. But I do feel that unless we uh, agree uh, to the extension, we will not have that conversation. I feel that the owners who've been here for a while and, and the new ones really want that major intersection to be developed. That is one of the key corners in our city. We want to make sure we get it right. I, I feel that the little half acre if I recall a few years ago, originally that was to be turned into some type of a park for the public. And there was disagreement on cost of paying for that park. Um, and that, to some extent, may be still part of the conversation. I don't know. But in order for us to, to get there, um, I, I think we need to to allow ourselves to have that conversation. And, and if we think positive in terms of after this dialogue with the developers and owners, maybe there is a, a, a happy medium somewhere there that we can proceed. Uh, because I do feel that it will be a good project. Uh, at, at the end of the day, it's going to be a really nice project. But we want to make sure that we uh, cross our T's and loop our I's and dot our, you know, all that good stuff. But in order to do that, I don't want to kill it at this point. I, I just feel that if we were to um, not allow this first extension, we have a new um, developer here that I would like to try to work with. Uh, it has already been stated what has happened in the past is in the past. It was not this commission that made uh, some mistakes. And I, I feel that we need to work with what we have right now. We don't know the full story. At least I don't. And I think in order for me to feel whether or not I want to move further with this is that I hear from the, the residents and I hear from the developer. Can we work this out? Can we work together to make this project a an asset for the city and not a liability? So at this stage of the game, my position is I'm going to uh, be in favor of the extension for those purposes that are already ju that I just stated. Thank you. Uh, thank you, board member. Uh, just very briefly, I'll just say that I also want to concur with the previous comments that were made regarding having the representative of the developer please meet with the residents that really should have been done a while ago but we are where we are please do speak with them because i i heard some things that were inconsistent is there an increase in density is there not i mean can we, can we get some clarity in what the situation is um please uh connect with each other uh let's go now to vice chair followed by <clears throat> board member cruz um there is an increase in density everything's public record you can look at the master plan that's forward for next week compared to what we're talking about now which is an approved site plan of 271 units um in regards to that land on the you know most valuable corner of our city i don't think there's a problem of anything being built there it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when if you do if we do care about what our constituents are saying in their concerns we are going to do that with action not by words or you know feeling we have to take action and we are in a position now where we have negotiating power commissioner hay and we need to keep that negotiating power approving this does nothing but spit in our residents faces because they're asking us not to and when we approve this or if this gets approved then we lose that negotiating power Board Member Kelly, you heard what the, what the, you know, I'm sure the guy's nice developer said he's going to offer when you asked a, 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 a bi-monthly report. That's what we're going to get. For land that's worth $1.8 million, we're going to get a check-in every two months, even though they defaulted. They are in default. We have negotiating power, and we have the ability to do right and do what's responsible fiscally for our residents. And, 
you know, I, I just want to say, you know, this is why we're here. We're here to have this conversation. We're here to discuss with, you know, the client's attorney. We're here to discuss with the client. What are you willing to give because of this default? What are you willing to give for public benefit? Because, you know, I want to go into the master plan, but looking at it, there's there's no public benefit. It's a public distress is what it's proposing. And so, you know, I'm not worried again about any development happening there because it's one of the last pieces of our downtown. Anybody will come in and buy, especially when we have town square going up, uh, boardwalk, the Pierce. I mean, all these projects are going up. Developers will be salivating for that land. So it's not a question of, oh, it's not going to move forward. That is that is that is BS. I'm sorry. That is BS. It, that is the most valuable piece of land that we have. And so, you know, I just want to, again, stress the importance of doing what's right right now for our residents. Despite any campaign contributions we may have received, we need to do what's right for the people here. And we have the ability to do that with the negotiation power that we have. And right now, again, they are in default. So I think we have an opportunity as the, as Catherine mentioned that we can ask for parking. Why are we going to give away everything when we have an opportunity for the developer to put their money where their mouth is and provide public benefit? And that public benefit is parking. I mean, it's it's very simple. It's very simple. Provide the parking. Let's move forward. Let's get stuff done. Because the the argument of fear of not something happening or stalling is it's it's a it's an excuse that every developer will tell us you know, just to twist our arms, it's time to not reflect our predecessors in the mistakes, like you mentioned, uh, Chair and Board Member Hay, in, in time to do the right thing, right? This was left on our desk, and we have the ability to do the right thing. And so I, I'm challenging all of y'all to do the right thing, not give this away. We have the ability, we've spoken, you know, with the developer, we've spoken with the representation. Catherine just said it. We have the ability to ask for more. Why would we not do that? If we do not do that, that is reckless. That is not fair representation for our residents. All right, board member Cruz. Okay, so this became a pretty heated argument. We have to make sure that as we challenge people to do things, we have to make sure that we do this for every single project that we see here and not picking and choosing which ones it is. And, you know, I I hear where you're coming from, um, Vice Chair. I also hear our chair and all of you guys all have really valid points. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about, first of all, was the size of the area. And as our chair explained earlier in the process, this is Part of it was public land, which was half an acre. <clears throat> and then the remainder of it was private land. I'm losing my voice. Give me one second. I know we may not have an answer to this question right now, but theoretically speaking, how many parking spaces would fit in a half an acre lot? Uh, I know you're not probably not prepared for this, and I apologize, but I don't know if it's something that we can probably take she's a few the, minutes She's to definitely get. calculating right now. Let's Wouldn't that be dependent on if it was a lot or a garage? I mean, that could be two different answers. So let's let's assume it was a flat area of half an acre, as it was when the previous CRA board gave it to the previous owner developer, um, who then sold the land, and now it became all. It appears that it's all now private land. <clears throat> Do you happen to know? I don't know without laying it out, but theoretically, if you're looking at half an acre at approximately, this is just parking alone, not anything to do with buffering and landscaping. Usually the standard is about 400 square foot per space. So around 45, 50. But again, this is your drainage has to be taken care of, all these other things. But I'm just looking very, very rough, rough. So Bonnie's um, architects can probably give us a better idea. But 
Yes. And that would <laughs> just rough, be for a yes, uh, okay. Vice Chair. Please finish. let the board member finish. Thank you. Now, um, as as it was previously mentioned, you know, we're talking about potentially bringing a new development, and yes, of course, that's a prime piece of land. Um, probably has ocean views and everything when it gets to be eight stories, if if that ended up passing. Um, we do have to think about the parking with our neighboring buildings. If we look at the history and we look at what's what's been happening in the past with prior development, it appears to be that there may not have been enough parking spaces provided for those developments at the time that they were constructed. And that has created a really big barrier for regular people coming into those businesses. It's affected the local businesses by not allowing people to come in and sell their products because of the lack of parking. So it's def definitely understandable that there's an outcry in the community, especially, I know it used to be District 3, now it's District 2. Um, but, you know, focusing on that and understanding that parking is a necessity. I know every single member of this board has agreed to that and has expressed concern with parking. Now, there's absolutely no way that in this specific development, we could fix the parking issues for the entirety of all of the buildings that were constructed before. However, I do agree that there is a potential for leverage here and the time is now to see what we can do to get some public benefit for what has been happening in the recent, um, in the recent year. So, I'm not a landscaper, I'm not an engineer, um, but I would like to propose to the developer and see if they would consider adding 50 public parking spaces into the development. I understand they may not have the answer today because obviously all of these things have to be studied. I'm not an engineer and there's no way to tell for sure, but just assuming that our executive director is correct, between 45 to 50 parking spaces that would have been in that public arena, again, it is now private land. It is no longer public land because of decisions that were made in the past. However, we do have to understand that this is a board now. We are able to make decisions and that's why we were um, we are sitting in this chair today. So that's what I would say. I would say it's a half an acre. How many parking spaces could we potentially fit in just not a, not a garage like stacked up, but in that one space, assuming that it if it were to be public land at that point, is that something that the developer would consider um, in exchange for getting an extension? And for us to know, like, we wanna work with you, we wanna make this happen, but we also need to see some sort of public benefit happening for our residents. Please respond. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Bonnie Miskell again. I can't come up with a quick answer on that because I'm not a designer and uh, Jordan is not either, so he can't speak to it. Um, I, I know that we are doing our best to get as much parking as we can, and we will definitely look at that and try to give you an answer by next Tuesday because then we can get technical people. I, the one thing I do want to point out, it's not quite so simple, <laughs> Commissioner Turkin, uh, and let me finish. If um, w when we talked years ago about the sliver where the motel had been and it lost and i think uh, maybe to you may have mentioned this um, boynton beach boulevard um, some some takings occurred in any event it's a it's a very narrow site to do a parking structure on that site you need to be able to put in ramps and you need drive aisles and you need sufficient width in order to have drive aisles and ramps so part of the problem with that site was constructability exactly what could you construct so your question i think was a legitimate one if you look at it as a flat piece of property with drive aisles and as tween mentioned retention areas and green spaces around the parking because you don't like parking or you can't pull a car and ride off the street back in and back out onto boynton beach boulevard you don't want that it's design considerations. We certainly can have our people look at it and tell us what you could fit on it. But one thing that was absolutely clear years ago in 2017 is you weren't gonna be able to put a parking structure on that property because you could not fit ramps and the radius and fire vehicles and all the other things that you must comply with in order to meet the safety requirements. So, but we'll, we'll look at it for sure. I'm trying to see if Jordan 
has it can. Ms. Miskell, just to be clear, you, can you get that information in by Tuesday? Um, by the city commission meeting? Is that I something? think we can take what was that parcel and have our designer lay out what you could do on it, meeting the city's by, by requirements. The meeting time. Yes, I think we could. Uh, did, uh, can you all hear me? By there he is. Hi, uh, yes. just to be clear, um, we have about 23,000 or even maybe a little bit larger um, square feet of retail space. Um, can you hear her? Can, can Mr. You're a little bit muffled. If you could uh, just uh, speak directly to the microphone, or could we increase the volume, Ms. Kerfman? Uh, how about now? I'm, I'm a little bit better. A little better. I, I just wanted to point out that we are providing 128 parking spaces for our commercial portion, which encompasses the, the entire ground floor and half of the second floor of our parking garage. So it is not as if our parking is just for the residents. We have certainly enough for the residents, but there there is 128 parking spaces for the public for to visit our retail and or other retail retailers in the area. So I just wanted to point that out. I, I don't I don't know that we can come up with an answer. I mean, this is really would be a complete redesign of of our site given you know, how kind of tight it is surrounded by three uh, roads that are all um, governed by FDOT and we work very diligently to, to make it exactly kind of how it is now. I, I and that's all I can say right now. I just wanted to point that out. But, Jordan, I think the question though was if you had that strip where the motel was and you had to surface park it, how many surface parking spaces would it amount to? I think that's what you're asking us to do. They're not looking for you to redesign the project to see how you could squeeze in additional parking and be able to engineer that by next Tuesday. That would not happen. But I think we can do the exercise because we do have an old survey. We'll get with Twee too to go over it before the next meeting so that she, you know, she can pass on it as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for putting that together. Um, and my point was, what is the, and again, I, I completely understand that it is now private property that was purchased and that the owner, the prior owner is the one that defaulted on this and the previous owner is the one that didn't meet the criteria and got the land for free. However, knowing that there is this opportunity for the city to potentially approve or not approve an extension. Um, and we do have residents here that are very concerned. And I I know that the entire board feels for the residents and understands um, that it is a legitimate concern, that it's something that has happened for many, many years. And having another development come in with significantly, you know, significant density um, and potentially not having any public parking spaces, which on a normal scenario would not be required because it's private property, but now we're facing a kind of different situation where there is a potential for, for default. So with that being said, um, is that something that maybe you could talk to your boss or whatever you want to call it yeah. um, about? in regard to the opportunity for for creating you know some public parking spaces in addition to because what was mentioned prior yes there will be obviously commercial parking spaces provided but that is per code and that's something that they have to do anyway so in addition to that is that something that we could potentially do um in order to obtain the extension or is that something that we can come back and have another conversation on and seeing how if the board wanted to go in that direction how that could potentially happen uh, so i think you know listen we're willing to try to get as creative as we can to to accommodate um some of the sins of the past um so so uh, absolutely we are willing to participate you know, there are some opportunities at street level, potentially. Um, the the code is very complex. It has all kinds of, you know, build to line and all these other requirements that we had to comply with that we did. But there are some opportunities, 
you know, that some of those spaces can end up with surface level parking as well, which is where it would be most likely to be used by the neighbors. So they don't have to go into somebody else's parking garage because that's obviously not ideal. So we can look at all of that. And it may be, you know, you know we have a lender on this project and we have lender pressures. So our goal is to get a project approved so that we can get into the building department. So there are certainly things that we can do. We'll sit down with, with CRA staff, we'll sit down with the city staff to see if, if we can get creative collectively with the code requirements as well, because we have a box that we have to fit within and we fit within the box with the project that we presented. If there's some relief that we can get with the box as far as some of these build to lines and all this other space that we have to have on the street level, we may be able to, to convert those benefits to parking. And we will certainly uh, endeavor to do that. Yeah, thank you, Bonnie, for, for that. I think that, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate situation. It's not ideal, but at the same time, you know, whatever we can do to try to get some public benefit from this situation, um and to use that you know for leverage i think it's it's important today um i'm going to withhold the rest of my comments for now to give other people a chance to all right thank you board member we're going to turn now to uh, vice chair and then we'll go back around the days so i heard the uh attorney say we'll meet with cra we'll meet with city staff we won't meet with the public just now just for the record the other thing yeah we can't fix the parking issues of the paths but we can take the right step forward. We have the opportunity to do that. Again, if we don't decide that today with a contingent approval on this extension, it's not, they're not, no one's gonna be held accountable for it. And this is a business deal and I respect that. And you want the, the best and highest use for your land and the best and highest use for your business deal. And so if anything is gonna cut into that bottom line, I, <clears throat> We, they're, they're, I don't believe that they're going to provide what we're asking unless they're legally bound. And it is our responsibility if we truly mean what, I, what we say, we truly mean what we say about making sure that there's public use to make sure that's legally bound. And so, you know, I just, and, and, and again, I didn't hear anything. I mean, I didn't hear any remarks or response as far as the deal being sold. I mean, who's to say that you don't get the entitlements and then the deal's flipped. I'm not clear on the last comment. Um, Ms. I... Miskell, from what I understood, he's concerned about the potential that your client flipping this property and selling it to someone else. Could you address that comment? Yes, it is not on the market. They have no intent to do so. They have a lender. They have, they've gone way beyond just entitling the property. They have their team to take it through permitting all of that has been done already so this is not a case and i appreciate your concern because it's legitimate given what happened before this owner is not interested in flipping this project he is a developer he's a builder he spent a huge amount of money and probably couldn't recover it right now in this market um the way it is but you know We'll do whatever we can, honestly, Commissioner. I mean, you're dealing with a different um, you're dealing with a different owner than the one prior, and we're trying to make good and give you the best project you can get. And so, however we can help, we're we're obviously going to try. And I'm not saying any of this in vain because I know my client feels the, the same way. They're not compromising the quality of their project, but perhaps the city, CRA, and the developer, and the community, um, since they've expressed a concern, can figure out how to creatively solve a problem. And generally, that works better when you have four heads than just one. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't put a property on the market if it was about to get more entitlements and more density because the value would increase. So the, the, the argument that it's not on the market, it, doesn't convince me because I would sell that at a higher, better use. Um, and, and and if it's not great, you know, great, but I just, I'm skeptical and I appreciate you understanding why. And, you know, as we've learned many times in the past with, you know, perfect example with the absence of reverter clauses, we're not legally bound. We have an opportunity to legally bind some public use parking board member crews. I think you have a great ask as far as 50, 
public spaces, I think we could go more. Um, again, you know, there is going to be a difference in the site plan. And so we're discussing what's here now and we're in default now. So, you know, I, I think we need to be mindful of what may come as well when we're negotiating this public use because 50 spots is great. 50 spots are great, but if the overall, you know, units is going to increase by over hundred, what does that really do? Nothing. And so I, you know, again, I, I think the right thing to do would be provide, you know, the best that you can do, not, uh, you know, a monthly, you know, a month, a meeting every two months on a report. You know, I think, I think the right thing to do, you know, a hundred million dollar project, you know, this is a great investment, right? For the city, it's a great investment for uh, your client, you know, and we're not asking for everything. I think the community just wants to resolve their concerns with parking and we have the opportunity to have a mutual way forward you know at their expense because at the end of the day these people live next door they're the ones that are going to be impacted more than anyone else you know and so you know i understand it's business but at, at some point you know i think we need to conduct good mutual business and if we approve this extension out of good faith you know i need to know certain legally binded that there's going to be some public use parking is kind of where my, um, you know, heads at some public parking provided moving forward. And again, I, I think we could do, I could, I think we could do more than 50. Um, I, I don't think the fiscal impact is going to be that huge. It's still going to be profitable, but, you know, to just to say, yeah, we'll look into it. You know, we'll, we'll certainly have discussions, well, um, you'll meet with city staff, CRA staff, and there's nothing legally binded. That doesn't mean anything because we don't get anything. And then later down the road, we're going to, it's going to be built. There's no public parking. And they're going to say, what, who created this mess? What happened here? And so what I don't want to happen is we had this opportunity to do the right thing and not be like our predecessors and make mistakes after mistakes after mistakes and lock in something that we can all agree on and move forward. And that is parking, I think. And, you know, if we can identify that we can't build a parking garage in 15 seconds, but we don't know how many spaces we can provide for parking, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about that. And I understand there's a history, but, you know, I listen, if if you guys can build this great, you know, this, this project, I know y'all can provide public parking. I, I know it. Yeah, if I can just add though, I can't redesign on the dais, nor can you. Unfortunately, I can't respond. We have a project that we've designed to code and we wanted to present it to you. And we have made it in the past year, we've made it to the city commission. It'll be next week. Um, if we do, if we were to, to attempt to incorporate more par parking onto that site today, we would have to redesign and we would have to start over again. And that may be okay with you but you would not do what the CRA had endeavored to do in their CRA master plan, which was to encourage redevelopment and eradicate blight in the downtown. A vacant parcel in the downtown is blight by definition. So, you know, we're, we're gonna try to do as much as we can without losing a hundred million dollar project because that project's been reviewed and it is ready to be approved and it meets the requirements of the code. I just I can't design on the dais. I'm not a designer. I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt to. So I can't give you that definitive answer. Um, you know, board member Turkin, I know you're looking for it. I, I heard you. I appreciate what you're saying. But I can't tell you that that can be added into this project without killing the project altogether, because I think it would. Yeah, unless we go higher and, and you've been a proponent of lower at which we've attempted to accommodate you on this one, we didn't go higher. We stayed where it was before and we could have gone to 150 feet. So I, I just, I can't give you that answer. Unfortunately, I don't know whether that could be done with the current plan and to get creative and do it elsewhere is going to take us a few days to figure that one out. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I mean, we could table this item, right? I mean, that's an option. We could table this and see what they come back with, and maybe have it before the site plan approval. I mean, is that an option? 
to request a special meeting for next week? What I'm saying, what I don't want to happen is this goes move, move forward and we just had all this conversation and the community spoke about what they want and then we didn't do, we just gave everything away. Um, you know, and then there's next week, there's going to be an even more impact in the community if that site plan gets approved. And then we had an opportunity. We just said, no, nope, you know, whatever. I'm, I can't do that. I can't sleep at night knowing that I didn't try and, and do the right thing and exhausted every single option. You know, and it's no, nothing personal, but, you know, I'm, I took an oath. I knocked on a lot of doors, talked to a lot of people to serve and do the right thing. And we have an opportunity to do that. And I'm going to. Just I'm, I'm going to fight for that, you know, because you didn't vote for me and uh, neither did your client. And so, you know, I, I don't think this, yeah, the, the lot's vacant, but it's not, we're not going against the CRA by wanting more for the residents. I think that's, um, you know, I think that's counterintuitive to say, really. Um, I think we're, we're trying to do the best for, you know, the people who fund you know, the, the CRA and, and, and the city. And so, you know, I, I want to get something locked in. I think it's either, if you need time, let's, you know, let's allow you and your client time, you know, look, you said a few days, look at what kind of public parking we can provide and then come back. And if it's, if it has consensus and it's adequate and my colleagues agree, um, you know, we can move forward and everyone wins. A redesign would be months, potentially up to a year, if we have to go back through the process, which we would have to do. You, you, you took it with all due respect. You took another year to bring this back, and so you, you, you know, there's been multiple extensions. This per, property was purchased 2021. You know, I know we want, we want to see something quick, but you know, you know, and and I don't know what the lending component is, and I'm sure it'll change once. There's a site plan. Once the property and usage changes, the lending is going to change. And so, again, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing binding that says that this property isn't going to be sold, and then it continues to be vacant until someone, another developer comes in. So we could, it could stay empty, right? If it was flipped, you know, or it could stay empty. We could, you know, work this out, take our time, you know, invite the public you know, get this parking, take a step in the right direction to fix this parking issue in our downtown to promote economic development. And we have the opportunity to do that now. And so I, I just, I understand, you know, faster, the better, great, but, you know, we have an opportunity to do the right thing. And I just want, I just want to hear and get something legally binding that will provide some public parking. And I'm okay to move forward with that and involve the public. But if I don't have anything that's binding, right? Like the binding contract we had that has been defaulted, what can I do? So we've offered to work with your staff, with the city, with the neighbors to see if there are ways to provide additional parking without having to redo the plan because we cannot wait another year to come back to you. Um, that's one option. Another option is if we do redesign, in order to get out of the default, we will go forward with another site plan that will show a plaza area on the north sliver, and we will orient the rest of the site to probably a higher building, because we'll have to fit more of the mass within a smaller parcel, which I don't think is ideal, but we could do that under the code because we can go up to 150 feet. That is an option. And if we have to redesign and we have guarantees and assurances, we'll comply with the code by building that building on a smaller footprint and having a passive park on the north end. Um, that's another option. Um, or we can go forward with a code compliant building which is what we have on the table today um, and see what happens there. But, but I want to make it clear that the default and remedies under the contract, and we discussed this, by the way, with Tara Dewey, um, when this contract was written, did not include a reverter and it didn't, it didn't include any other remedies other than remedies to 
bind us in default, which we'd ha then have to cure the default. Curing the default will require a site plan to be done for that exhibit that was in the document. And the balance of the property can be used for all legal uses, which is what we're doing. It does not allow the city to look for reverter. And I understand you're not happy about that. And there was a problem with the town square and I get that. You know, and, and so as a lawyer, I'm telling you that you're asking us to do the same thing and pay for public parking that I, we did not cause the deficiency, which is really not fair. But if there's a way to do it with the plan that we have, that they've invested a huge amount of money with, then my client is willing to try to do that. We're trying to work with you but we cannot absorb the burdens that were caused by the Marina Village developer or the Casa Costa developer or others. Um, other projects affiliated as one, they provided public par parking, but they also got money and they got free land. We're not asking for anything more. We just want to get a plan approved. So if there is a way for us to do this in a collaborative manner, we will be certainly willing to do that. But if you're asking us to redesign our plan and spend another year, what they'll probably just do is redesign the plan, show a passive park on the north sliver, and develop the rest of the site that they have always owned or that the predecessor owned and they now own, and just go forward with that and be code compliant in that regard. Um, we think there are a lot of benefits with this plan, and we haven't even been able to present them to you so you can't see them at this point and we haven't talked about them but we're trying we want to work with you but we can't absorb all the problems of all of the others that came before us and that frankly no other developer that has recently got approved was asked to do but we're willing to try if you'll give us the opportunity to do so but i respect your opinion um commissioner i've heard it and i understand it it hasn't not sunk in I just can't accommodate what you'd like me to. Quick and question to Steph, one second. Just quick question to Steph. This, what you have on the screen, this is the old or the current? That's that's the old. This is the old one. Yes, okay. that's the one that was approved in 2017. And the new one is, uh, it's been published. I was looking at it earlier. Um, so, like, I, yeah, you can you can say you're going to move forward with that park on the northern parcel, and, and that's fine, but I, I don't think... <laughs> Financially, it makes more sense to get the increased units and density. It's going to be more profitable. You get right? the increased units right. and density. The units, you, you, we still own that plaza, and we get the benefits of that land. Right, unless so, we pursue litigation. Which you could, but right. why would you when you don't have a remedy under your contract to do so? Right, and one thing we've discussed in the past is paying Lua. Meaning, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean, payment in lieu of. And, and to move the contract forward for an extension. Oh, a fee in lieu of, so as the 20, like the $20,000. Yeah. So I, again, this is land is worth $1.8 million. So I don't think a $20,000 fee is respectable, um, especially given away for $1,000. I mean, I've exhausted my uh, opinion on this. I think my colleagues know where I'm at. And, uh, you know, I just hope everyone does the right thing. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn now to the remainder of my colleagues on my left. Board member Hay, questions, comments, anything for Ms. Miskell, concerns? Yeah, I will uh, try to make them quick uh, comments. But just to wrap up, um, I don't want to repeat what I've already said about your meeting with the owners or the meeting to try to resolve this. Uh, you said you would do that. Um, I, I, I want to say to my colleagues too that we, we went through this same thing with uh, the town square project when we had the owners meet with uh, the, the uh, citizen, the property owners about height and density uh, and, and that. That was resolved. So I, I see no reason why, you know, we can't come up. We got some pretty good owners of property. And we got, you guys are pretty sharp. So I, I see no reason why we can't come to some agreement again. Um, there, there are going to be several garages that uh, adjacent in some manner to, 
to yield, I believe you said 128 spaces uh, that's going to be there. Uh, we're going to have 150 uh, open to the public, I believe, at the Pierce, okay, which is right across the street. We're going to have another number here on Boynton Beach Boulevard in Seacrest, which is within walking distance. So um, there's going to be pretty good parking, but I still agree with uh, the, the vice chair about getting additional parking, if we can, uh, on your site, because that's that's critical. That's what the owners, uh, that's what the property owners are looking for. And and, I, and I'm, I'm with that. But I don't think we're at that show stoppers uh, point yet. Um, and I'd like to say to Vice Mayor, we don't lose our power. We, we can always cut this thing off. Uh, just if we don't do it tonight, we can certainly do it at the commission meeting, but that's another story. Um, I do want to say, though, that I think we're saying the same thing, but we're just saying it differently. Uh, you kind of want to do it now. I want to do it uh, uh, later. I just feel that uh, we're going to have a commission meeting in one week, uh, and one week is not a showstopper to me. Uh, we waited this long, and I, I think the property owners would agree with me. Uh, we want that property developed. It's been an eyesore for too many years. And now that we have a, a, a developer uh, that's uh, looking uh, at developing that, I, I really want to try and work with them to make it be a win-win for, for everybody. Um, and I, I do want to say this for the record. Um, I, I do not um, appreciate the concept or the idea that because someone receives funding for their campaign from a vendor or uh, a developer uh, that I'm showing favoritism in my decision. Uh, I resent that remark because that's not true. It's never been true. If you talk to them, they'll tell you what I say, all right? Uh, just because you uh, support me does not mean that I'm a vote for every project that you bring up. I don't play those games. So I want that for the record. But um, I just feel that uh, we have an opportunity here to develop that eyesore. I, have, I just feel that one week is not going to make that big of a difference and we'll be able to take a, a, a closer look at the real picture of what we're up against rather than trying to piecemeal it at this point in time. So that's my position and that's why I'm going to, to, to support uh, the extension. Board Member Kelly, let's if we can call this, you know, closing comments or final comments. Yeah, I am. Um... The, my concerns are similar to vice chair, and that is that what, and I guess, Catherine, maybe this is directed at you. Can we put any sort of condition on the extension? Because, I mean, we, and no offense to anyone, but words are just words. I mean, you can talk and say that you, I mean, we've heard it before. We'll meet with them, we'll talk to them. Well, nobody showed up. So what do we do now? Um, and so um, so I, I want to believe that, and I, and I do, that there, there will be outreach and there will be conversations, but then what? Um, what happens when they say, well, we met with them and we can't make it work. So there you go. So here it is. Um, so I guess I, what can we do, if anything, t as a condition for this extension to really hold the developer to working towards 
And maybe it's not a big increase. Maybe it's not, you know, because maybe, and I don't know, because we're not talking about parking and code and where we are, but maybe they're over code for commercial space and public parking or what we deem as public parking. Um, and so maybe it's it's not a, as big of an ask as we think it is right now. Maybe they're over spacing their commercial or, you know, but what, yes. I think I understand your question. So I'm gonna answer the question I think you're asking and then you'll tell me if we need to okay. do it again. <laughs> So you could put conditions on the extension, and I'll revert to the simple example, which is the extension is conditioned on payment of X amount of dollars, right? That's a condition on an extension. You could do something similar with um, this extension is contingent upon the developer holding a public workshop no later than X, Y, Z, or meeting with staff to determine if available parking spaces can be increased consistent with code no later than X. So you can you can withhold enforcement until that time and then make the extension effective only after those happen. Or you can make the extension effective so long as those things happened, otherwise the extension automatically terminates. So you do have the ability to put on, on some kind of condition. Um, you know, again, I, I will reiterate that there is no reverter clause. And so um, there there is some ability for them to do um, exactly to incorporate a public a plaza or something like that. And so, you know, depending on your end goals, we'll just sculpt what those conditions, what you would like them to be. There is the ability to put conditions on that. Um, and then the developer will evaluate whether they wish to comply with those conditions or whether they wish to risk the default um, and go from there. Right. I think that, you know, I mean, my goal is not to, to, to force the developer to put this little our soul park thing, because I don't think that benefits anyone. Um, I, I haven't really heard anyone screaming that we need to have that little park with some pretty trees. Um, so I don't want that. I don't want to get to that point. Let's put it that way. But I also want to make sure that, that we are um, holding the developer to, um, to making sure that they've done everything they can to maximize the public commercial space that's let's let me just call it public all the parking spaces not needed for code for residential yeah, parking spaces beyond code requirements correct okay. that that they've done everything they can to try and assist in alleviating some of the parking. I know there's gonna be additional parking and I'm excited that Town Square is incorporating public parking and the Pierce is gonna have public parking. But with the build, we know that we're gonna have more events and we're gonna have more activity downtown. And so we have to keep up and we have to make sure that we're keeping up with parking needs. And we're starting behind the, behind the eight ball now and so we're all i think in every project going forward we have to make sure that we're trying to grab whatever extra we can to try and make up that difference so i mean not i am comfortable with having some sort of condition that not only you know requires them to meet with the public but really holds them to really being creative and finding ways to assist in some of these parking issues and and if that is to say well under code i only need to have 75 parking spots for the square feet that we have for commercial and we're already building out 128 and so we're already giving you more then maybe that's enough for the public to understand that we are they are building more but i'm guessing that's probably not 100 percent the case so but that's kind of my position is i want to make sure that we are we're not you know we're all I think we're all saying about the same thing. We don't want it to stall. We don't want, we want this project to go forward. We want it to, I want to stop driving by this empty lot of weeds and garbage, um, just like everyone else. So um, we want to see it move forward, but at the same time, we have to make sure that we're doing the best thing that we can for the residents and the, and the neighbors and, and that we're, you know, we are um, looking out for them. So those are, you know, I, I would be comfortable moving forward with some sort of condition that, you know, where th those needs are met, just like you explained, Catherine. Thank you, board member. Uh, board member Hay? Just, just one statement. I agree with what uh, 
uh, board member Kelly is saying, but how do we measure if they've done their due diligence? I mean, is there any metrics? Is it the number of spaces over and above what the 128 is? is I mean, we, we, we're saying we want to put this in writing, which is great, but how do you measure? Can I, can I also pose a related question Go before ahead. council chimes in? You know, when you factor in Town Square, uh, the Pierce and the surrounding uh, projects that'll bring public spaces, do we even know how many more we need? I mean, I would love to know that number. What exactly is the public deficiency? So we can kind of have a sense of that and what to target. Um, I'm not even sure if that's something we know or can find out. But I just wanted to pose that question out there, right? Maybe we don't need 150 parking. Maybe we only need 75 or 50. Whatever that number is, we should probably find a way to know that. But I wanted to just throw that out there. Go ahead, Council. Sure. So there's there, you have a couple of options. One is you can set a metric tonight. Again, meeting by X date, meeting with public, meeting with staff, working with staff to provide some sort of documentation to you all those are measurable metrics and so those are enforceable things another thing you could do is currently they are in default you have not waived your default um, you could continue to stay enforcement for another month to allow for information gathering um, they're in default it's, it's your right to call it or not and so you could you could withhold default for one more month but you know before you direct your legal counsel to, to or, or whatever time you deem fit to stay enforcement to gather some of the information that you're talking about to understand any parking deficiencies to talk with um, any staff that may be appropriate concerning what can be done on the site plan to give them time to work with their designers um, of various professions to understand what can be done um, and, and come back and have a more full conversation on that. Um, you can put in a penalty for failing to do something, right? You know, a monetary penalty of some kind. And so, um, you know, again, I would in encourage you to have something that's measurable that we can black and white say did or did not happen. Um, but what that, that looks like you know, you you can be creative, and, and certainly I, I think the developer at this point, um, it may be appropriate to see if they have have some concept of what they could get done in, in a period of time. Um, I mean, those the the options are yours. I mean, again, you you can delay enforcement. You can um, give an approval contingent on certain things that would terminate. You you have choices here. Let me uh, just chime in and say that I would be comfortable with the proposal here. Um, I would just, as my initial thought, their initial ask was a year. Um, I know it takes potentially several months if there is a redesign. So I would propose six months of an extension, assuming they follow those conditions that you, you've mentioned, uh, Council. Uh, so this way, if it ever comes to a redesign, for example, then they have the time to actually redesign. Um, I can't imagine them being able to redesign. That's again, that's if they have to uh, by next meeting. I don't, I don't think that's practical or likely. And so at this point, um, I do think we're gonna need Ms. Miskell to come. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at this point, I, and I'm just going to kind of summarize where I think the conversation is, and I'm not proposing to speak that this is final, but I think the board is proposing a six month extension and in exchange, your client will agree to work with CRA and city staff to see if there are more sites available, more parking spaces that can be put on the site above code requirements to host a public workshop. And is there anything else that, that we are contemplating at this point? Um, one, one second, Vice <clears throat> Chair. Um, Board member Cruz, you, you've, you've, you've been waiting, go ahead. So one thing that we have discussed earlier, and that's that's a good point of, hello? That's not, it's, um, it's uh, appropriate, I guess, uh, as the chair is mentioning that, to potentially make the extension shorter, less than a year. Um, the question is, are we making that extension to be to like to start construction? Because obviously that's very likely not going to happen. But you know, the question I think that I think the biggest point that was made today was there was this issue with with um 
the previous land, there was the issue of the half an acre, there was the issue of potential potential opportunity for getting a public benefit out of this. So, you know, are we making the requirement to have meetings or are we potentially making the requirement more of a request? Um, you know, something that I mentioned before was looking at the space of the, you know, half an acre piece of land. I know that we don't know exactly how many parking spaces could potentially fit in there, depending on the surrounding area, the stuff that it needs to go around it, um, sidewalk and that sort of thing. Um, but I think that maybe proposing something more direct or having a goal in mind would be more appropriate in regard to um, doing something that's better for the residents and making sure that we are achieving a step in the right direction and not just having a conversation per se. So um, I know that I don't know if there's if that was a motion on the table chair or if there's some more discussion to be had. Um, but what I would personally like to see, hopefully, um, is can the developer come back to the board and say, you know, my proposal was, could we get 50 parking spaces in lieu of that land that was given? to the prior owner, which we understand it's not the current owner, that's understandable, but could we potentially get 50 parking, public parking spaces um, added to that project for public benefit? Um, and I understand there would have to be some sort of a study, maybe potential changes to that. And if it can't be 50, what can you offer? You know, I want something more tangible, like maybe 50 is possible, maybe it isn't, but what is possible from your end to see what public benefit we can get that is tangible and it's not just a conversation. So I think we have an opportunity, you know, I'm trying to look at how we can get more information as fast as possible because I think that's what you all want. Um, and I couldn't tell you what we could do today, yep. but certainly between now and Tuesday, we're going to delve into that one quite significantly because we're going to see you soon. Um, I have my own idea um, of a potential opportunity that could be easier and, and maybe better, and we're going to look at that too in the next week. So all of that can happen. Um, you know, I'm going to be perfectly frank, and I said this before, in six months' time, all that we're going to be able to do is work on a permit package. So you're not going to see shovel to the dirt unless they're doing some testing out there as far as soil and other stuff that they may do during the, the pre-construction phase. Um, our goal is not to re redesign. And I think you share my views there that you're not looking for this project to get postponed and to be sitting the way it is. And, and actually, I've had some very pleasant conversations with some of the neighbors already. It's not their goal to shut that site down and to be looking at dirt for the next however many decades. But um, we hear what you're looking for. I don't know if we can accomplish that on our site, but there may be some opportunities around our site. Um, or we may be able to go back and look at the parking that we have to see if the demand is there for that parking to be dedicated fully to whatever use we'd be required to do it under the code. We can do that in the next week as well. We can get with, assuming city staff has the time to get with us to go over this and analyze it in depth. We certainly can do that. I think the abbreviated time period that the uh, mayor has suggested um, at least forces us to get a lot done in a short period of time, which we will do. Um, and we certainly can do that in analysis. And I'll come back with as much of this information as possible by next Tuesday. But, you know, I don't, I can't redesign today, you know, and that's not going to happen in short order because it took us 10 months to get here, you know, give or take. So. Vice Chair. Um, so why, why don't, why don't we table this item wait for all this to come back and then yeah, i don't know if i can if i'm when you speak on this now or next week but that can be postponed with next week so that way all of us can do our due diligence we can hear from the community you can negotiate 
um, with staff and us and the and, and and your client, and we don't have to rush through this. It's like you always say, board member, hey, we don't need to rush. We don't need to rush, right? So what's the rush for this approval next week? Well, we do have lender commitments, and we will lose our lender commitments if we post. If you'll let me finish, please. I have not interrupted you, Commissioner. You know, what's the rush? Well, 30% increase in construction costs is a rush. But most importantly, we have contractual obligations and we've gone through this process and we have done everything that we are asked to do up to this point. So if, if we can't be sure that we have a right to go forward, there's no way that this owner is going to invest in the hundreds of thousands of dollars that he's going to expend on construction drawings if there's no certainty. You know, we're looking for some certainty. And, you know, I wish I could fabricate 50 spaces. I would tell you, great, no problem, we'll do it now. But I don't have that ability. All I have are some ideas and the ability, the ability to execute those, you know, in accordance with what I'm committing today. But I don't know that we can find 50 spaces. We're gonna do our best. And maybe we'll get 20 out of what we have that we don't need. That's 20 more than I have today that I can hopefully tell you about on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just not a good, it's not good business it, for 20 spaces, $1.8 million parcel. You guys are in default. You know, it's not our fault that you are on. It's not our fault that you're at the deadline with your lender. That's not our fault. It wasn't and our fault our, either. Right. But it's, well. Yeah, but we're going to do our best to try to figure out a solution to something that we didn't cause, but we're going to try to fix it. But but we 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 got we have to work together, Commissioner, on this one. Yeah, we absolutely. cannot do this alone. And we're committed. We are committed. We're in it. We're in it, hopefully to win it, but we're in it. Well, I know. So. It's, you make a lot of money. You know what I mean? You're gonna make a lot of money, your client's gonna make a lot of money. Of course. I mean, this is a win-win situation. Well, they, but we need the community to win. And so with that, I can't unless there's anything legally binding to propose what you know we're discussing, I'm not gonna waste my breath anymore because words, talk is cheap. You know what I mean? Your you know, words are great, but you, actions, actions determine your character. So uh, that's, that's. All right, thank you, Vice Chair. I really do feel like we have exhausted this topic. We will be seeing this again on the city commission meeting next week, Tuesday. Um, I have proposed six months. Again, that is to just open the possibility if they have to redesign that there would be time to do that. Um, listen, we need to move forward. We're going to see this again on Tuesday. Uh, I've given you my suggestion of six months along with those conditions uh, that council have said. Uh, so this way we can hold them accountable to those conditions. And then as well as on the city commission meeting, you know we can attach conditions of approval then. My so. Um, Chair, if I may clarify yes. your, your proposal, it, do you intend to be six months um, from construction or six months to submit permits? Six months of an extension. Originally, I, I was proposing uh, after the city commission meeting. So they have six months to go ahead and submit for those permits. So, so six months to submit permits after... Yes. Um, one week from today yeah. that's what we'll date it that was my suggestion that's your yeah okay that should be plenty of time uh to do whatever needs to be done to, to make certain accommodations that this board wants board chair if i might also suggest um currently there's a commencement of construction deadline in the agreement i would suggest um some time frame be put on that as well what would you suggest exactly um because if you're saying if we move forward with the next six months extension for the permits are you suggesting that that part needs to be legally adjusted as well? Um, so if they were to submit, I'll give you an example. Okay. A commencement of construction deadline is useful because that is when the project would start. If you were to provide only an extension that allowed them to submit building permits in six months, they'll have met that condition when they submit the plans with no obligation to thereafter construct. And so I would just... What add, would you, Executive Director, if you could chime in, what would you recommend? Uh, microphone again knowing that there's some permitting issues in this the city will have to review and go back and forth as well so a reasonable time is really maybe another what four months or so to obtain permitting permit or four to six months it's really your discretion but just to let everyone know that submitting permits may may require one or two sets of review back to get 
term permit issuance. So you're looking at a certain amount of time to get per building permits, but that is contingent on your staff at the city being able to get a complete set and to be able to get the responsiveness needed. And then so. mobilizing construction after permit issuance. So um, six or eight months after permit. Tomorrow. Yeah, I think probably you know, commencement of construction will probably likely be that because you'd have to get land development permits as well. So just those are the things I just want to make sure to be fair to all. Um, obtaining a building permit also requires, now that can be done, you know, expeditiously once everything is known to the developer. Um, but again, so commencement construction probably up to probably six to eight months. All right, um, Ms. Fiscal, just for practicality purposes, do you think that's likely for, with your experience with our city's permitting staff? Um, I, you're very busy. You have a lot of projects in the pipeline that obviously affects your staffing. But I think that Twee is right. Generally speaking, depending upon the complexity of the project, you're looking at from the issuance of permit or from the submittal of permit anywhere from six to seven months to get the issuance of permit and then to, to actually commence you know it's she's right six to nine months thereafter okay i i, I want to move this item forward because we've, we've spent too much time i'm going to go forward with six months let's get the permits in by six months um after which i'm comfortable with no more than seven months after which for commencement of construction. I know there's difficulties with city staff and working through permitting, but I'm not comfortable with anything more than that. Again, this is all contingent on those conditions we previously discussed. And would you like and um, to put the, so I wanna specify those conditions. And again, I'm not yes, please I'm not sure if you're passing the gavel at this moment, if you're just trying to craft a no, motion to be entertained. To okay. make it clear and we yeah. somebody okay. else can make the motion. Okay, so um, that it would involve a meeting with city staff within 30 days, 20 days. I mean, 30, you know, okay, 30 days, you're nodding. Um, a public workshop um, to be held within 30 days, 45 days. And this is, I'm asking you all. At least okay. 30, yeah. 30 <laughs> say, to, to get a public workshop together. Um, okay, public workshop in 30 days. Or not at least, maximum 30 days. The okay. sooner the better, obviously. Okay. Uh, and you're talking about the developer hosting? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's their project, not mine. Right. So they need to, <laughs> they need to be the ones presenting it. Okay. Um, is there any other, so besides meeting with staff and um, hosting a public workshop, both within 30 days, were there any other conditions that you wanted but to? Meeting with staff with the expressed intent mm -hmm. of exploring every possibility for public parking. Maximizing public parking. Yes. Okay. Um, so not just any meeting will qualify, but. Clarification city and CRE staff. Yes. Recommend. Course, it, yes. Course. Yes. I would assume as much. Okay. Um, and then were there any other conditions that you wanted to put in there? Those were the two I heard from my colleagues, but if anybody else wants to add anything else. Okay. And I've got another question before I end that. Sorry, we'll just to get your thoughts. You. Would you, per, and then is the suggestion that then failing that they would come to the board or failing that automatic notice of default? I would need to understand the reason why they failed. Okay, so come back to the, I would so, okay. recommend we come back to the board. Um, you know, you, okay. Okay. And I have to say, I mean, if these things don't happen, you know, again, um, I'm 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 torn because of what I said before. I mean, I want to make sure that these things that have been brought up from the parking and whatnot are addressed. No question, that's a valid point. Uh, but I am a little bit torn because I also understand how in many ways you're being punished for the sins of the past, right? So, but it's okay. I mean, we're, we're going to get this done and um, we're going to move forward. I, I'm hopeful that there will be a compromise, a solution somewhere in there. We've done it with much more complicated issues. I think we're all pointed in the right direction, but I need to give you the opportunity to actually fix this and make these accommodations. So I'll leave it there. Um, council, was there anything else? So just to clarify, I, I want another offer a different option from, sure. which would be, so in total, you've said 
permit submittal in six months, commencement of construction seven months after that, or you could simply um, give uh, 13 months for commencement of construction and allow them. So in other words, if you, they might be incentivized to submit earlier and then have a longer time to mobilize. It's up to you. I'm just putting that is out there. There's a practical option. difference to that. I mean, the practical difference is if they were to submit about. their submit for permits sooner than that, which I think Ms. Muskell's represented is unlikely, but say they were to submit within five months, they would have to commence construction within a year. If you provide only a commencement of construction date, then they would have the full 13 months based on what you've said to me. So if you, yeah. I think I understand what you're saying. I'm gonna, if, for the sake of clarity and some, Moving this forward, I'm going to say I'm going to stick to my original position. Okay. Let's keep it separate so it's clear. There's no confusion. Would you like me to reiterate everything that you have said so that absolutely. someone could make and a motion if, if they like desire? Absolutely. Anybody would like that motion, then I'll entertain that motion. But okay. Let's have council be absolutely clear. There's no confusion. Okay. And this this would be essentially a a project. I um, mean, I'm sorry, a contract modification. So, Ms. Miskell, can you confirm that this is, um, if we're going to treat this as a as a modification of the contract rather than an that you I'd like for you. I, I think that would be appropriate. Okay, so the the motion, uh, if someone would like to offer the motion, as I understand it, would be that the developer will submit for permits within uh, six months of April 18th. Um, they will commence construction seven months after submittal of the permits. Um, they will, within 30 days of the um, of April 18th, they will meet with both the CID staff and the CRA staff to discuss ways to maximize public parking. They will host a public workshop. Two public workshops. They will host two public workshops within 30 days to discuss the parking issue. Um, in the event of failure to meet any of these conditions, they will be required to come back to the board. Cool. Now, before I entertain a motion, um, board member Cruz, you've been patiently waiting. I'm what were you about to say? Yep. Um, so I I understand your point of view, Chair, and I understand that you know you're you're trying to be fair, and I completely get that. At the same time, I feel like we we could be doing a disservice if we don't take the opportunity to at least hear back from the developer with an actual figure of how many public parking spaces we could get as a public benefit oh, to this. Oh, let's, let's add that as a condition. Okay, so. Is there any objection from my no, colleagues? No. Let's add that as a. So, and, yeah, but, but, but we the had, point. We discussed it earlier. Right, but, but the whole point of this is, you know, there's negotiating power that the CRA has at this moment, which is the golden egg. If we give away the golden egg, then we have nothing and then they're going to, you know, it's possible that somebody could say, okay, we can't give you even one. So what I'm trying to say is like, I understand, you know, we, we, we do want to be fair, right? We want to be fair to both. Like, you know, we understand that you guys are in the process and that you're going to continue to be in that process, but you know, can we get a commitment to get a figure and maybe look at this? Um, maybe if we can get a commitment or, or at least, some sort of an answer. I know we're going to be talking about this during the commission meeting next time. I don't know if it's legally allowable for, for, for example, Bonnie to come back and say, I was speaking to my client and this is the number that we can come up with. Because if we go ahead and move forward with, with the extension now, like we, we can very much give the extension, you know, at that point, once we get a figure of, okay, this is how many parking spots public parking spots we can give to the CRA um, to try to alleviate the issue of the land that was given to the prior owner. We understand, again, it's not uh, the gentleman right now, but, you know, would the board be in favor of having that as a contingency to then provide an extension that very well could be a year instead of the six months, maybe like a full year extension for commencement of construction, which is what we talked about and I know that mayor, that's something that you just mentioned of potentially extending it, but you know, can we get some sort of a public benefit, even if it's, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna ask you to give us 200 public parking spaces, but can you get back to us and tell us what I can do this for you? Maybe I can't do this, but I can do that. And it shows good faith on your part as you, I know you're a great lawyer and you're good at what you do at the same time. I wanna make sure that we can also show the public like, 
we have some skin in the game and this is you know we're we're making this sacrifice on your behalf because we care about the public needs and the issues that have come before us um is that something that you would feel so would be? so that i'm clear um, are you asking if we can get back to you by next Tuesday on what or whatever time frame you think is necessary and we could potentially hold a nightmare? I don't want to. I know you have a, mo or, or a potential motion on the floor. So you're talking about staying, I think, so, for so, now. And so then not enforcing the, the not not enforcing anything until we hear back from you. This is what I can do. But, but not making a decision on the extension. Correct. Okay. And then at that point, once we hear how many parking spaces per se the developer can provide to the to the CRA for public use, then at that point the the board could very well say, hey, you know what? This seems valid to me. We're getting something instead of nothing. And we have some sort of a public benefit that we fought for. And we're we're gonna move on in the direction of giving you an extension. Does that make sense? Does that seem fair I, to no, you? No, I understand. I understand exactly what you're saying. And I think that's the difference between what Commissioner Turkin had been speaking about versus the, the rest of the group. Um, I, certainly, you have the prerogative to ask that. I don't know if that's going to be a quick answer for you. And that's our fear, is that we have a site plan that is scheduled to be heard next week. and if in effect, that plan may become invalid if in a month, let's say we come back to your next meeting in, the, in a month we say, yes, here's what we would have to do to get you X number of spaces. It might be another deck on the garage, if we could even do it. And the way the garage is designed, that would be difficult. I just don't know how long that's going to delay us. So it, it's problematic. But it, you know it's your prerogative, and you certainly can do it if you feel that you need to. Um, but I, I think this, I think we may be able to come up with some quick solutions, but not to a magnitude of what you're talking about. That's going to be something that's going to require, my guess is, significant redesign, and then that's a, a long delay. And at that point, you know, I don't know about the viability of the project because there is not the money in it that. Commissioner Turkin thinks right now based on this market, but that's not relevant to your decisions and I get that, but that makes it more challenging. That's the only concern I have is that it's it, it's time that, you know, we don't really have, but it's your prerogative. Is there any opportunity because it's being heard on Tuesday for you got for your engineer or whoever does that specific thing to say on Tuesday, hey, this is what I can do at least for informational purposes and then we can hear this back as a CRA with the CRA had it whenever the next meeting is, but at least to have. Well, that certainly would be less of a delay. You know, it, it, we'll have some information. We just may not have as much information. Um, you know, I have an idea that may be plausible and that might, we might be able to come back on Tuesday and say, hey, yeah, this will work great. And we'll have gotten to engineering department and planning department and run, you know, the idea by them it's possible that we could do it that way. And that would certainly be less time, but you know, again, time is not our friend and we're under this incredible pressure to get this thing going now with the commitment that we have and any delay could kill the project. So, but I understand exactly and, what you're asking. And just to reiterate the point that I, I think is clear, but changes in parking might require a change in site plan. That site plan is what is up next week. So changing in parking could have the overall effect of delaying the effectiveness of the project. I think that's clear, but just so that you're working with full information. Which is why I recommended six months uh, and to it, open for the possibility of that even happening. I'm not sure if that will, that may not be required. Maybe it is required, but at least there's a window for it. But that is why I said what I said. May, may, I, may I speak? Please. Yes, Jordan, go ahead. <laughs> okay. um, I just wanted to say that, you know, it is a little unfortunate that we're hearing about this now. We have been in a really collaborative, very intense um, and uh, relationship with city staff since last July. And it's just unfortunate that if we were hearing about this then, 
that this is kind of the path that we wanted to take, we would have had eight to 10 months to sort of figure this stuff out. But here we are a week before our site plan approval, we have funds lined up, for, you know, uh, investors ready to go based on the site plan approval that we have worked really, really hard in five different iterations. And staff can tell you that we resubmitted these plans five different times to work with city staff on architecture and design, on the different panelings, on how, on the height, on how it looks. And just to hear that, okay, we're at the finish line and then we basically have to effectively start over after all of this collaboration is just very, and I, and I, and I totally hear the points and I, and I completely understand the concerns, but it really does feel like we are getting the brunt of this and we're getting punished when we have been so collaborative providing a lot of open space, providing much more and designing a building that we thought was really going to be very well received just for it to effectively be rejected and to, to, to start over. Because even though you're all, it may seem like it's only a small ask, it really is something we, we would need to go over. I mean, you know, just the entire process itself, even if it's a minor modification, is three months. And I, I just don't know that this is what I, I was hoping for from a collaboration with the city. Again, if this was, you know, when we first put it in, if this is what you wanted at that time, that that's great. But we're at the finish line and it's just very unfortunate to, and just as a last point, we can't, a lender and or an equity investor cannot commit to going through for the next six months construction documents, putting everything together if we don't know what we're building. And again, we're at the last point and we were going to immediately start construction drawings on this project once we get site plan approval. But that can't, that can't occur if there is something hanging over with the, with the redesign, it just can't. No one is going to touch this if they don't know what the actual end result is going to be. I just want to say uh, this item was tabled from February. So there, you know, we could have discussed it then. We didn't. It was tabled and now it's a week behind um, a commission meeting. I'm not going to support this. There's nothing legally binding anything, no monetary value. The only thing that's legally binding is public workshops and collaboration with city staff and CRA staff, which could be, hey, here's here's what I'm thinking. We can't do it. Thanks for your time. So for that. I'm not going to do the public a disservice um, and and not vote on something that's not legally binding for a public benefit. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, my understanding is from what I heard council say is it's a contract amendment. And again, it'll still come forward to the city. Uh, again, that will have another opportunity there to attach conditions of approval. So um, council, could you just please reiterate the, my proposed motion just so we either vote something up or down so we can move forward? It is almost 9.30. Let's sure, I, I do want to understand just in, in light of the continuing discussion. So the meeting with the, Cedar, the city and CRA staff regarding the maximizing public parking, um, is is it your desire that, um, that if that did not require a site plan amendment that that maximization then occur? Um, or do you want to require them to go through a site plan amendment if there's some sort of maximizing way to do that or do you want to, them to just have a meeting there's in other words they might have a meeting and they may determine that through and um, there are various reduction methods available in your code right and so they might be able to provide parking above and beyond what's required right. of them that does not require necessarily a, a major site plan approval or maybe it only requires a, a minor modification which could be done with staff so um is it simply the meeting that you want to occur is it the meeting and then implementing any measures that do not require a major site plan modification implementing those measures it, and it, it, implementing it whether it's a major modification or a minor modification or only if it's a minor modification which can be done administratively uh, le for sure, the minor modifications, and if it can okay. be done administratively, absolutely do that. I mean, there's no question. Okay. So I I believe that your motion is that the developer would agree to submit for permits and um, for construction permits within six 
with, within six months of um, April 18th. Thereafter, commence construction seven months after the submittal for permits um, within 30 days of meeting, uh, I'm sorry, within 30 days of April 18th, meet with the city and CRA, CRA staff to determine whether there is any ability to, um, to discuss and maximize public parking, public parking being defined as parking above and beyond what's required by code and implementing any measures that require only a, a minor modification, providing two public workshops within 30 days of April 18th, and then in the event of failure to meet any above the any of the above conditions come back to the board. Um, and at that point, the, the board could vote to find and default or terminate. Precisely. All right. All right. Is I'm there sorry, a, I, I would like to get, is, as this would be a modification to the contract oh, the, and an extension, I would just like to get. contract modification. Yep. So we already talked about that. I understand that point. I, I'm, I'm a, little, a little unclear because you spoke faster than I could type with one Apologies, finger. bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I got the 30 days to meet with staff and also the neighbors. And after that, what was the one right after that? So 30 days to meet with staff to discuss maximizing Got public that. parking. Okay. And then if there's, if it's a minor modification to proceed with that. All right. So that, I don't know that I have the authority to commit to. If it's a minor modification, I'm not clear what that means. Under the city code. Level, right? Is that correct council? Right. Yeah. If there's a, if there's a site plan modification that can occur without coming back before the city commission to implement additional parking. Okay, but it's administ an administrative. If there's an administrative, I'm going to need my client to weigh in on that because I didn't. I don't think he was clear on that either. That was the part that I I missed. Jordan, are you still on? I, I am. Can you repeat that, please? So, so essentially, that condition um, after meeting with the neighbors and with city staff, if there's a way for us to add parking through an administrative process, that we would then have to come back to go through that, we'd have to go through that process and the timing associated with that, that's a, the other thing I'm not clear that the city and maybe tweet you now. I can't speak for the city, but there, it's not a matter of administrative or not. The What separates a minor and a, a major is really also the materials you submit as well. You know, so if, it tr if it's triggered a minor and mod uh, or major, it's not just, staff's authority the name of those is basically um There's if you're asking for, for some more them. like some other deviations or things like that it may trigger a, a major site plan which is more documents to submit so i don't want to speak for city staff um on that because it's not just minor just doesn't mean administrative minor is if you're I, I not asking for additional you know uh, so this, if, if, they, and admin, yeah. if there's an administrative approval that can be obtained that would increase right. public parking, we can, we don't have to, we can just word it like that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, if there's an administrative than, approval that could increase the availability of public parking yes. to commit to making that administrative approval. Within what was, I'm sorry, what was the time period associated with that? So the meeting would be within, within 30 days. Again, that, that would be within the city's hands to determine, um, it you know would be diligent prosecution of you seeking that administrative approval, but obviously it would not be your job to get it, to issue the approval. Right, that would be the city's job. Okay, fine, that I understand. Okay, okay. is that acceptable, Gordon? It's it's uh, it doesn't seem like it's up to to me. Um, if that's if that's what uh, the deal is, then it is what it is. Okay. Oh, just so that it's clear. So essentially, and I'm sorry, I know everybody's being very patient. I apologize, but words are important. <laughs> so um, assuming that we, can, we, we have solutions um, that will create more parking, which is everybody's goal here, that, and there's an administrative way to do it, um, that doesn't require us to go through the 10 month process that you just did, that you're agreeing to commence that process diligently and it you know as much time as it takes to since we don't know today what that means you're going to diligently proceed with that until completion how will this affect next week if, if any 
Well, so assuming you get approved next week, and I apologize again for this, assuming that you get approved next week, then you're going to have a site plan. And if there's a way to expand what, or conversely, to go back to the city and, and say, we, we overstated our parking and we don't need X for what we have. And we have a way to adjust the data table. That would be an administrative change to the site plan. And I think that's what they're suggesting that we commit to do is to go to go back and modify that table. It doesn't stop you from proceeding with your permits because you're not going to be changing the footprint of the building. You may be adjusting some of your, you know, open spaces to convert those to on-street parking as well. You know, this is very complex and this I think we are complicating it to a point that we have a lot of unknowns. That's I think his reluctance and my reluctance is that we don't know what that means. And we won't know what that means until after we've had a 30 day meeting and staff has said, you know, we could do this or our engineers have said we could do that, but we just can't tell you what that process is going to be without giving them the ideas. That's the problem. You know, if we could go back to the six months to submit the building permit, commit to the meetings, commit to exercising and implementing anything within the meetings. And if we can't do it, come back to you and speak to it. That may be a better approach, at which point we know exactly what we have to do and we're not speculating on the dais. I think we've ventured beyond clarity here. If you consider that as an alternative. I think we're on the same page about that. Okay, all right. Well, if we can do it that way and see what we can come up with with ideas find out what the process is and if it is administrative and it is something that can be done without redesigning the entire project we'll come back to speak to you and share with you what our what it is and you know i think that gives us all more solid ground because then we know exactly what we're committing to council final restatement of the motion and we're, we're going to proceed Okay, um, submittal for building permits within six months of April 18th, commencement of construction seven months after submittal, a meeting with a city and CRA staff within 30 days of April 18th to specifically discuss how to maximize, I'm going to call it public parking, and what that means in this case is parking that shows as above and beyond what is required by code. Um, a developer at that point will either agree to implement that maximized public parking or come back to the board to discuss it and, and see what the options are. Hosting two public workshops within 30 days of April 18th. Failure to meet any of these conditions would require um, the item to come back before the board, which could then be considered for termination. And at this point, I'll also ask for the ability for your legal team to draft this and the uh, mayor to execute it. I'm sorry, the board chair to execute it um, upon legal approval for convenience. All right, may I have that motion? So move. There is a motion from board member Hay. Is there a second? Second. There is a second from board member Kelly. All those in favor of this motion say aye. 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 All those who oppose this motion say no. No. The ayes have it, four to one with vice chair Turkin dissenting. This motion passes. All right, let's thank you and good evening. And uh, let's move forward with the next item. Uh, the next item is 12E, discussion and consideration of direction and assignments for CRA advisory board. Um, Executive director, if you could open this item, then I'll turn to board member Kelly. If I'm not mistaken, this was your request. Yes, um, before you again, we're bringing this back for some suggestion of what could be assigned, I believe commissioner, Oh, board member Kelly had mentioned that, you know, again, we have a good uh, crab board um, makeup of all various member and diverse background. And um, she, she felt that it, it's not um, good practice to have them not have meetings um, to help uh, with any of the, the research or anything that could be needed, could be assigned. Um, the last time we reported to the board, there were several things that could be upcoming. Um, for the um, for the crowd board to review, 
one of which is possibly the purchase and development agreement for the 401 to 411. Um, the other was also the budget, the budget planning process that starts in July. Um, there could be some weigh in on, on you know, the CRA plan, depending on what the board wants to do with the scope and the future. There'll be plenty of that if we proceed with the CRB plan amendment in the future. So um, those are some of the items. In the past, the board has given the CRAB board the duty of looking at uh, potential site acquisition with three um, boxes to fill, whether it is um, allowing to purchase it, if it's in the CRA uh, mission to do so, if it's to land bank or it's not to pursue it all. So those are some other choices you may have. Um, and I'm here for questions. Thank you. Board Member Kelly. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's a, this is something that it has, you know, I, when I was on the crab board, you know, we were evaluating potential um, properties and it, it, it was very much just like busy work. Um, the board uh, didn't really take any of that advice and really it was like we were given these projects just to be given the projects so i don't want to get in a situation like that where we're just giving the crab board work to do um just because they're there um and i know we have a couple of upcoming things i know that the post office um and that uh those rfps were going to be something that we're going to be able to be reviewed and it's been delayed for various reasons so i know that's something that is on um you know i so i don't want to i don't want to belabor this conversation and i think that there's a couple of items that are coming up that they'll be able to review um that are productive but i think it's something that we need to uh to to really look at uh what you know projects or what things the crab board can do i know we're looking at um, you know, Boynton Beach Boulevard and, and our focus being on acquiring some land there. And so maybe we can use them uh, to research uh, different land pockets that are available. Maybe that's an option um, for that, you know, those options that, that they had reviewed previously. Um, but it's something that, you know, I want to keep it on our radar so that, um, you know, month after month, it's, they're not just being canceled because what's the point of having a crab board if uh, if they're not being productive so um, and they're not they're not given any options or any work to do so um, so those are just kind of my thoughts as to why I brought that back um, before the you know before the board so that we can uh, you know keep it on our radar and think of ways and maybe um, you know maybe not tonight at 9 40 um, but you know think of ways that we can either use that um, you know what what are some other ways that that the crab board can be effective in um, you know in assisting us in what we do? Thank you, board member. Those are uh, fair comments. Uh, are you proposing any new new assignments for them? Well, we have the two potential assignments that they've been delayed multiple. Well, one has been delayed a couple of times. So is this the uh, RFP for a USBS related site? Right. Okay. Um, so I don't. Um, executive director, is there anything else upcoming that we can add to their uh, to their list? Is there anything that staff has is proposing that they could could do? At at the moment, no, because again, some of these um, acquisitions that we have available for us um, pretty much re requires a very quick turnaround time. And um, again, it's subject to the board. We'd like to have the board's direction on expenditure. So it has to do with budget as well. So, um, and we really personally, I've sat on a lot of advisory boards also to meet for a half an hour or just one item. It's, it's not best use of their time right. either. So, um, you know, it could be an ongoing thing. Like I said, once we have a direction on the master plan and once we are going through that process, there will be multiple venues in which we could use CRAB in the past, the board has done that, as a public forum. So rather than going having developers or you know stakeholders meeting, we can have that, but we can also have advisory board 
members can come all together, you know, and use CRAB as a form to do so. Um, so, like I said, not at this moment, the next month or two. Um, and usually when the board do have the CRAB board review purchase and development agreement, you would have had to look at it first. So I'm not sure if next month and month after would be feasible either, um, because we would have to draft that up if we do successfully get someone in, you know. And again, that's contingent on the USPS giving us comments and, and they will be doing it soon um, from what I understand from the representative. Thank you, Twee. Um, Board Member Kelly, did she answer your questions? Yes, I just, I I don't have a, an answer to, I just, I don't have an answer. I don't have a solution, but I, it's something that we, we all need to, um, to figure out because I think that it's, you know, the board members are, you know, valuable and we're yeah. kind of. I, I do agree with you, board member, and, and I think the sentiment is the same, which is we may not know exactly what more we can assign them today because there's several things still upcoming, but I do concur and uh, it, wherever we can give them more assignments and get more of their feedback. The only thing I would add would be perhaps if we could enhance our communication with them, perhaps if they came to our meetings and gave an update or a summary or whatever it is that they've recently discussed versus, you know, just being attached as a document. There's that back and forth that we can have with a representative or the chair of that advisory board that I think would be more valuable so we can explore what exactly were they thinking in their discussions. Um, but I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. All right. I know in the past, and I know Ms. Cross. Please. Yeah, in the past, I know Ms. Cross is there. She's attended all your board meetings uh, in the past, but that is really her voluntary work, <laughs> and we appreciate that. But um, you know, I can offer that to the to the crab member to have a representative, maybe rotated, or at least they'll know what your um, where you're headed conceptually in some of these items. Right. Um, Absolutely. Any other questions or comments from my colleagues about this item? All right, um, seeing none. Oh, Vice Chair. Only one bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, I just wanna make sure we, I got your input. Did you have any questions or comments regarding uh, the assignments to the CRA Advisory Board? Nope. Okay. All right, I guess this concludes this item. Uh, we're gonna move on to 13A. Discussion and consideration of purchase and sale agreement for 433 West Boynton Beach Boulevard. Ms. Shutt? And can we have the map? Yes, this item is before you because the CRA has been contacted and we have the opportunity to purchase the um, property located at 433 West Boynton Beach Boulevard. Um, based on board direction previously that we were looking to more or less find as um, available properties um, at a correct a right price. <laughs> um, so what we did was when we got this offer, we went and got an appraisal and the property is appraised at 950,000 and the asking price is 1.2 million. Um, this is approximately 26 26% uh, 26 over appraised value. And um, in the past, the board has looked at purchasing properties, um, but normally the gauge is uh, no more than 20% of appraised value. However, if there's key parcels that the board feel that's necessary to um, acquire, uh, the board has gone beyond that. We've provided in attachment five, the property comparisons of all recent purchases. Um, the 1.2 million will be looking at $48 a square foot. This is a dollar more than what your recent purchase for the um, Gracie property last actually two months ago and then if you look at comparison with the assemblage for the Pierce um, it's at $76 a square foot comparison to the post office site um, with also the the 217 and 209 North Seacrest Boulevard that is at $57 a square foot and if you go down again, um, the ABC rental, which is the 401 to 411, the new potential site for the post office, that is at $54 a square foot. And there are properties that we didn't even entertain bringing it to you because it was just too 
much. Um, those are a little higher. So the gray shaded line is what the current um, property valuation is for this per square footage. It's forty-eight dollars and forty-four cents. And again, we also included in the last bracket, the last five or six lines under Boynton Beach Boulevard private entity. Those are what have been um, the numbers that we see for the southern portion uh, west of I west of Seacrest and east of I-95. Those are the prices that we've been seeing for the assemblages by private parties to the south. Tweet, let me just open the conversation by thanking you for putting this together and staff, because this, this graph here, this table, uh, is incredibly useful and helpful in the decision-making process. And to see the value and the patterns in our purchasing. Uh, the second thing I'll say is uh, this location is such an eyesore. I am happy to see it go. So I most definitely am in favor of uh, the acquisition because I don't want to ever want to look at that. It is uh, such an embarrassment when you drive into the city and this is one of the first things you see. So uh, I will be supporting moving forward. But let's uh, turn to my colleagues. Let's begin. Where was I last time? Uh, let's begin on my right. Board member Cruz. Um, thank you, Twee, for putting this together and being proactive. I know that we talked about the potential, the board has talked about several times in previous meetings about the potential for having a grocery store um, on the east side of 95, close to Boynton Beach Boulevard. And while this may or may not be big enough, because I don't know how to create grocery stores or the size of them, I think that it's significant enough to where if we continue to accumulate land, we're getting closer in that direction. The same way we're accumulating land um, lightly west of that as well. So I think it's a step in the right direction. I think we, I, I am definitely in favor of moving forward with this, knowing that after Senate Bill 102, there's a lot of changes that have happened. Um, and if we own the land, we will have some control over it rather than none. So. I am in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you, board member. Vice Chair Turkin. We'll have any comments. Okay. Uh, board member Hay. I am in favor of this also. I'd just like to say that it's District 2, and I'd clean up that property myself because it's uh, used as a dumping ground. Nice. And uh, we really, uh, really need to move ahead with this, keep it clean. And I'm tired of looking at that eyesore because I live about three blocks up from that piece of property and it's it's terrible. So I'm glad to see that uh, we're moving forward with that. I would like to add, I don't know if Mr. Hasner or any of his representative is available online. I'm not seeing them online, no. All right, uh, board member Kelly. Um, I don't have that much to add. I think that um, this is what the CRA is about and this is what our job is. And so, uh, you know, we've been uh, lucky to uh, to have gotten some some good uh, land acquisitions recently. And so I'm all for this. All right. Thank you, board members. Um, let's turn this item now to public comment. If you would like to speak on this possible acquisition of uh, 433 West Boyne Beach Boulevard. Now would be the time to approach the podium. Seeing none, is there anybody online with their digital hands raised, Ms. Kerfman? No hands are raised. All right. All right. Well, public comments on this item are now closed. I will entertain a motion to approve the purchase of the vacant lot located at 433 West Boyne Beach Boulevard. Motion to Come approve up. the purchase of 433 West Boyne Beach Boulevard. All right. We have a motion. Okay. <laughs> Motion from board member Hay, second from board member Cruz. All those in favor say, I'm sorry, one second. Uh, if you could also yes. include that, um, that the, the board to authorize the board chair to sign subject to legal review, because we'll be drafting the um, agreement up with all the standard, you know, information in there, but to authorize the board chair to, to sign Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Subject to legal review. Authorize the board chair and subject to legal review. Yes. Okay. All right. Council, are you feeling good? 
I know they want every T crossed. I, I know, I am, I, am, I am generally feeling good. Um, I'll just add in that if there's anything unusual that comes up in the purchase and sale agreement, of course, we'll come back to you. Before. Thank you for that, we appreciate that. We have a motion from board member Hay, second from board member Cruz. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those who oppose say no. The ayes have it, the motion passes, thank you. We're moving on to 13B, discussion and consideration of draft scope to amend the 2016 Community Redevelopment Plan. Ms. Shutt, if you could introduce the item. Sure, um, the plan, as you know, was the CRI was established in 1981. The most recent site plan was a consolidation of four previous plan. Uh, we've attached also the definition of slim and blight in there just for a reference. Um, our goal is really to uh, eliminate slum and blight, provide affordable housing, and also incentivize private development um, to redevelop our area. The CRA plan, again, back in 2016, have gone through public meetings, public workshops, and public input. We anticipate, um, again, the proposed amendment to do primary things, to update the plan to reflect statutory requirements, and any other current development practices that's out there um, that we could learn from. Another thing is to provide a framework that will continue to leverage CRI resources with private investment, also to incorporate innovative growth management and development practice to, again, to foster a resilient economy, also while protecting national resources. That's a big ask, but um, that's something that could be done with some, some input from all stakeholders. There's also um, one of the things that we'd like a staff to, to be able to do is to show what has been completed, what is current and ongoing, and then identifying any prioritized future projects that may be accomplished, believe it or not, we sunset in 20 years. So with the state, all CRAs only have a maximum of 60 years of life. We are approaching towards our, you know, not the end, but almost over the crest of our redevelopment um, life man we would like to also um the reason why i say 15 years is i'd like to also to identify the transition between the cra and then the city who will be obligated to assume all of our responsibilities once the cra is has sunsetted so again with that i would um also point you to attachment three this is my first like i said the first preliminary point bullet point of what are the scope of work that will be required obviously you know, this is a large project. Staff can certainly do it, but it will take us a longer time. Um, city staff also is, is inundated with work as well. So therefore, the last resort maybe is to get a planning consultant or redevelopment consultant to do this work. We are estimating it'll take approximately 12 to 50 months process and costs, I'm looking at probably about 200 to $150,000. Again, that's based on how many tasks you would want to assign this um, entity to do. And with the work that we're looking at, I don't know. Vicki, can you go to attachment um, three? I'm sorry, executive director, if I could just cut you off for one moment. Could you help me understand how this costs $250,000? What does that entail? Because that's a lot of money Sure. for I... what sounds like strategic planning workshops. Or an equivalent. Well, it's of. it's um again if you go to attachment three details, the task that needs to be done. So really in general, the consultant will need to read up on all the background, the history of the CRA, familiarize themselves with the current um, planning efforts and any kind of statutory requirements that may need to be done. One of the things that the board had expressed an interest in is really the CRA boundaries, to relook at the boundaries, to see if there's additional um, land that could be put in there for redevelopment. Um, so again, they'd have to look at the finding of necessity, that's the first thing, and then they need to look at the feasibility and the process. There's a process to amend our site plan and the boundaries. Also, that entails going to the county as well, um, because we do get Avalorum, 95% of their Avalorum um, taxes. Um, valuation anyway. And then again, once they do the research, then they need to probably meet with stakeholders. So you can you can instruct us, again, if they need to meet three meetings versus 10 meetings, that's a cost. Um, approximately, you know, the ongoing rate for land planners, architect, engineers, it's probably about 
anywhere from 175 to 225 dollars an hour so depending on how much you want the consultant to do versus what staff can do with the surveys with a lot of electronic stuff we can save money there but once they get the public input or the stakeholders input then they start drafting so i would imagine they would at least need to do at least two major drafts to go back to the board and then back to the public for input so that takes you know time to do gathering that and then also getting ideas and providing I would like to see an economic um, component to this because that's something we're missing. Um, our plan is good in that it has some planning vision, but it doesn't have a value to associate or how to get funding and leverage our funding, state grants, whatever that may be. Um, so that is, that's a lot to do, um, but it's not just strategic planning. It's actually developing a plan like you would have your, um, your neighborhood plan that you would have or your parks master plan, things like that where there's actually product, a product that you can, you can, um, you know, show. Um, but like I said, it varies on how much you would want and what the scope you would need. So if you don't really want them to explore the boundaries, you know, you can take several tasks off of that, but it's there for you to review and give us input. There is no rush for us. There is no requirement of the state or anything that our plan has to be updated you know um we would like to at least update if it's going to go through this process to make sure that we take anything that has been you know prohibited or not encouraged you know in the past statutes <laughs> the update that the statute has we'd like to have that be made whole um, but again it's for your consideration and and review Thank you, Twee. Um, let's turn to my colleagues. Let's begin with Board Member Kelly, if you have any questions or comments. Um, I think that, um, I think it's important for us to continue to look at our CRA plan and fee, especially as statutes change. And I just, I, I wonder if, it, I don't wanna say premature, but with a, a very important, you know, the Senate Bill 102, you know, how it's going to affect everything and, um, you know, that this might be a good time to to look at this um, and see, you know, since it's going to take a year to year and a half by then, we'll have a good understanding of how um, that, it's my understanding that that bill may change a little bit um, over the next year. Um, and so maybe, you know, by then it'll it'll there'll be a little bit more concrete as far as how that bill really affects uh the cra and the city as a whole so i think that it's important that we look at um you know how the statutes have changed because we have seen cra you know statutes change um, that affect the cra and so this isn't updated uh to include those and so i think it's important that um you know that it's been a long time so it probably is due for an update so I don't know the best way to go about it if spending the two hundred fifty thousand dollars is the best avenue, or if that's just um, you know, or but so I'm open to you know to what my colleagues, what you guys, how you feel about it. So so, so thank you. Uh, two things. Um, first, executive director, just for clarification, the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Is that correct? So it's really, it's just kind of a la carte, if you will, depending on I, what specific task would give the consultants. It's my guesstimate on, on the current, you know, um, cost of, of planning services currently. Um, again, we, with direction from you, we could narrow it. You know, if you just want to look at the statutes, if you want to look at just infrastructure, because again, um, the things we can fund and the things that hopefully when the city is doing their strategic planning and all the evaluation of the capital improvement and things like that, we may have more clarity already. You know, you can take that off. But really, the, the main thing is that's just an up to and we would have to budget it in this upcoming fiscal year. So it would usually take about 60 to 90 days to procure this, the consultant services. Um, and then we can do the scoping, you know, Tight, tighten it or loosen it a little more if you'd like. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, for that reason, I can move forward with it. Um, 
I just was uncomfortable with the idea of spending two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a person to have a bunch of meetings and I and mean, read you, documents you can and put take things a look, together. Yeah, you can look at this and give us direction next month if you feel yes. like there's a need. I mean, it's really up to to you as a board. I mean, decide. right now, I mean, based and this is my question to board member Kelly and to my colleagues, based on the draft, the proposed scope that uh, our executive director has put forward, are you comfortable with the the overall scope? You know, we may modify specific tasks down the road but the big picture scope is what they need so they can move forward with the uh, hiring of a consultant board member kelly were you comfortable with the scope that they provided yes okay board member hey yes i'm i'm comfortable with that uh did i hear you say a tweet that two hundred fifty thousand dollars if they did it six months uh and i guess the question is if you were to do it if our group were to do it how long would it take and good question yeah based on the priority probably at least at least a year and a half to two years and it's really working with our cons um our attorney as well as city staff again it's based on the priorities that you already have for us right, right. and priorities that you have for city staff um and again what i'd like to do is after the board gave us direction on this i'd like to go to city staff also and then work with our attorney um on you know if some of these can be achieved um but i think i wrote it in a general sense um that it probably could just be very little tweaks um there's a piece that they could produce that you you can't the economic yeah. components i think would be needed you know we don't have that expertise in-house to do so but that doesn't i don't think that costs that much you can narrow the scope Okay. A lot on that. Uh, I can support this, no problem. Thank you, board member. Vice Chair Turkin. Uh, no, I think this is long overdue. Um, new board, new vision. Um, the question with the mall, I see that there's a exhibit there to incorporate the mall into the CRA district. That was just well, an, that. No, I mean that was just an overall that they need to look at other areas that they, redevelopment you can, right you can give Got us it. direction you can say look at the areas contiguous to the current boundaries you know there are other ways to incorporate redevelopment principles in other area without having a cra so i just want to work with our council to present those to you what i'd like to do is ha have the meeting with city staff have the meeting with our attorney bring back you know a revised scope that we can incorporate into an rp before we release that Okay, no, I think I think that's a great idea. I mean, if we could incorporate the mall in the boundary, it'd be great. You know, I think uh, we've heard a lot about that. I don't know if it's feasible or not, but I uh, definitely support this. I think, yes, it's a little bit hefty of a price tag, but it's an investment in the future of the community, and it establishes vision, which I think is what this new board needs. Thank you, Vice Chair. Board Member Cruz. Yeah, um, I think we should look deeper into this and have specific goals for what specifically we want to accomplish. I know that Tui and I have had several conversations um, in the past about potentially adding more areas to the CRA or creating a special taxing district. And I know you just mentioned them all, but that's something that we've talked about many times. Um, as we talk about opportunities, there's obviously the the limit that it's private property but maybe the property around it or finding incentives um, for redevelopment i do believe that there are areas in my district that can definitely use redevelopment that i believe are blighted that i believe need a lot of help um, and we don't have the resources in the city to do so and that's something that we and i have discussed in our private meetings before um, my thought here is can we can we i don't know what the word is would it be tone it down or or specify it a little bit more to define what exactly we want to accomplish for example we talked about an economic development component and maybe bring down the price tag by i would say hopefully 50 percent um we are i hope i'm wrong but we're about to face really tough economic times and i really hope i'm wrong but if that's the case, I want to have money in the CRA available to help our small businesses because they're going to need it. Um, 
that's where my mind is at. I think that we can strategize and find within our board, we could, if we could find, I don't know, let's say five to seven goals of what we want to accomplish. Is it, you know, economic development? Is it obviously understanding? I feel like I kind of already understand sort of for the most part, Senate Bill 102, um, but just as a, as a group going over it and understanding that we have lost a lot of our ability to to make local decisions on on development and such. So um, there are federal, not federal, there are state statutes that are precluding us from making those choices. And I think that if we were to become a little bit more specific with what we want to do with this, you know, future CRA plan, I think that it would save us hopefully a hundred thousand dollars. And I understand it's an investment, but also thinking about the future and hopefully having funding available, um, you know, within the CRA to support our businesses if times were to get tough in the near future. So I guess my my two cents quickly would just be, again, just finding a few goals that we want to accomplish together, whether it's five to seven or 10, hopefully the, the less, the better, so it could be more specific. Um, and then getting back to maybe like, let's say going over this and each one of us finding a few that we are very passionate about um, and bringing it back to, for example, the next CRA meeting where we can specify what exactly the RFP would have so that then they can send out the RFP and it could be more cost savings there um, versus the potential 250 now. That's kind of my two cents. Uh, let me ask our executive director, thank you for that board member Cruz. Uh, let me ask uh, Ms. Shutt, do you need us to have that kind of granular decision of every single task now or wait for you to work a draft RFP then we can make our final adjustments then? The draft RFP would just be the shell RFP. It would just tell you when to submit, what materials, you know, your resumes, things like that. The meat of it is really the scope. And I think if you turn your attention to task two, it talks about the fire necessity. Could we open that up? Yeah, so really, you really need any kind of boundary change. You need to have the finding of necessity. And, and that is important because if you don't have that, you can't just have it, you know, be in the CRA plan. So you have, and I've included in attachment one, the definition of slum and blight. And you have to, there's certain tests that you have to do. So you can't just say because there's crime in this area. There's got to be more than a couple things you have to meet to be able to meet the finding necessity. It, and, and there would also be, if there's an expansion of the boundaries, then there's a there's a, a notice and coordination process with the county in which they can comment and object. And, um, you know, the, the depending on what is included within the scope, it really impacts the process of it from sort of a legal and, and practical perspective. So um, to Tui's point, meeting with staff, I think might help exactly with what you're discussing, which is sort of refining those goals and bringing back to you. I see. All right. <clears throat> Any other final comments from my colleagues? Otherwise, I'll turn this to public comment. Um, anything else? All right, public comment on this item is now open. Again, this is 13B regarding the scope of a potential uh, CRA plan. Yeah. Okay, Harry Woodworth, Boyne Beach. Um, big, big plus here. This is something that's probably been long overdue. Uh, the only question I would ask is how do you redo the community redevelopment plan without having a city strategy in place a long-range strategy because if you don't know where you're going all of these things are road road maps leading someplace the city strategy hasn't been updated in years okay you might want to look at it on the web page uh all of this stuff has to have some direction you know where you want to be when you're done and this is great you should do it but how are you going to fill in all these pieces and these tasks if you don't know what the big picture is and what's the strategy for the city. And that hasn't been updated in quite some time. Uh, I think 2020 was the last one that was updated. So big issue there. If you look at those tasks, you also notice that they have a lot in common with things like the LDR, the comprehensive plan, and a whole long list of other things. If you're going to do this kind of stuff, maybe float up 100,000 feet, look down on it and say, this stuff is all the same stuff. Let's at least prioritize the pieces of it that need to be fixed 
or we're going to spend the rest of our lives at meetings like this one where a developer who spent 100 million wants to spend 100 million dollars finds out days before his big presentation that the input he got from staff didn't include the residents and i can tell you from 30 years of coming up here that not including the residents is a big mistake it leads to that kind of stuff all the time you guys have experienced it a couple of times already you're going to experience a lot more of it if we don't start getting community involvement sooner we used to go to staff meetings in planning and development at the same time the developer did okay lennar didn't do that our community so i spent fifty thousand dollars on a lawyer they spent millions and they walked out of here with their head hanging and they never did build the project okay the next guy that came got sent over to meet with us got more than he wanted we got more than we wanted in a two-hour meeting it cost me some coffee. I mean, we're missing the boat on this stuff. There's people that live here, have lived here for decades that have the answers to a lot of this stuff. We don't have to, well, we do have to hire a consultant, I agree, but the consultants can pick the brains of the people that live through these things. And we don't have to spend four hours talking to a, on a situation that could have been resolved with meetings with residents six months ago, actually a year ago, which it should have happened, which should have happened. So I guess I'm just saying support this, but have something above all this, have a strategy so that people looking at this can see how do these pieces fit? Is this one worth working on? Do you want to expand the CRA? That's probably a pretty good idea. Economically, does it fit with the city strategy? How the hell would you know? You really, you don't know. And so you're just going to keep spending money on these tasks that aren't part of a train moving in any particular direction. It doesn't work that way. Thanks. Thank you. All right, next speaker. Hi, my name is Barbara Reedy. Um, I want to reiterate what Harry said. It's a good idea. I mean, one of the beautiful things of having the five of you being the CRA board and the city commission is that you work hand in glove. You know, it's not a two headed snake where you've got five people making decisions about CRA that do not necessarily jive with what the commission's vision is. Okay. Um, so I think it's a good idea to, you know, let's see where it matches up and let's double our impact of the money and, you know, move it forward. Um, the discussion of what tasks to give your crab board, here you go. Turn them loose on this. As an advisory board member, this is something that you're, that's what your advisory board's there for. Turn them loose. Brainstorm, tell us, you know, Give them something useful to do, and this is this is a meat, a meaty project that they could, you know, bring back something helpful for you. Okay, um, we're already a pretty big CRA, if I understand correctly. It was 1,600 acres. Yeah, so we're like the largest CRA uh, east of the Mississippi, is what a former CRA director used to brag about. So. I don't know how much support you would ever find. I don't know. That's what the brag was. Um, <clears throat> whether you'd be able to get more this, you know, district added to it, but you know, go for it. Why not? You know, if there's other areas that could uh, that could use the additional funding to help paint, fix roofs, mow the grass, whatever it takes, you know, to make the area beautified. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Ms. Kerfman, is there anybody online with their digital hands raised? No hands are raised. All right, public comments on this item are now closed. Again, we have a draft scope uh, of work for uh, a CRA plan update. Um, if there's nothing else for my colleagues, board member Cruz. I actually think that's a great idea, giving the CRA advisory board the task of you know, from a citizen perspective, what they want to see the CRA to be. And that's so meaningful. I didn't even think about that, but that's great. Um, so if maybe we can add that to a future agenda for the CRA advisory board, if everyone else agrees, that's an opportunity. So is the instruction to let them review the scope or is the instruction to, for them to give input on the CRA, the, the actual vision for the, so it's. I say both. Oh. If, if, 
you know, discuss it and, and see what they think right. and I, read the scope. Right. I think just like Twi, you gave us this breakdown of what the potential scope of work could mm -hmm. be. And you asked us to go and look at it and see if there's things that right. we want or don't want, or, or did we miss something? Did we not miss something? The same thing with the crab board um, that they could do, that they could review the same thing and come back and, and then we can use that sure. and, and so that kind of include it in with our evaluation on what we individually right. want to. It's just so it's we more can, people. We can have it for the May meeting. Okay. The mm -hmm. crab May meeting. How will that work exactly, uh, Twee? So we're going to uh, give this to them so we can get their feedback. And what if they recommend some new things that weren't on here? Would that still be able to make it into your process for? as your work through in preparation for the RFP? Well, what will happen is um, we will bring that back to you. Their, their May meeting, you'll be seeing some of their comments that they'll report back. Um, they'll be included in this agenda item. So your assignment is for them to review this and provide input. Yes. Right. Yes. And then and bring, back to us bring that back and I'll ask for one of their representatives to come yes. to the May 9th CRA board meeting yes. to say, yes, this is okay. No, we need more work on it. Yes, this is okay, but here's some other things that you can look at. Yeah, I would love the them to come and actually talk to us about what the feedback was and sure. instead of just reading it on a piece of paper. All right, if there's nothing else, we have a motion to approve the presented scope of work. So move. Second. All right, there's a motion from Vice Chair, a second from Board Member Kelly. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion passes. We're moving on now to 14A, CRA Economic and Business Development Grant Program Update. After that, we will go to the MLK Boulevard Corridor Mixed Use Project Update. Chair? Um, yes. I withdraw uh, my update on C. All right, is there consensus from my colleagues? Is yes. There Okay, so all we have left is just the economic and business grant program update. Vicki, would you like to do that or I could, it doesn't matter. Um, would you have it up? Bonnie is online. Oh, okay, if she wants to do that. Bonnie, you're unmuted. Good evening, board. This is Bonnie Nicklin, uh, Grants and Project Manager. Um, so uh, I apologize I missed the beginning of the meeting, but if there's a specific question, um, let me know. Um, otherwise, this is just the monthly update for the uh, status of our grant program. We have a balance of $547,000 and some change left. Um, I've been having so many uh, grant meeting requests, which is very encouraging to see. Um, you know, now there now it's just a, a lack of space. So I'm exciting to share all the development coming so businesses know uh, they can keep their eye on Boynton. And I'm here for any questions. All right, thank you for that. Um, I forgot who asked for this item, but if you have any questions, I would address it now. Was that you, Board Member Cruz? Yes, just wanted to see. Um, no, I, th I think we're good. I'm happy to see a daycare in there. I know we need more of those in the area, so happy to be supporting that. Um, and there's a pet grooming boutique. Maybe I can try it and support a local business. Yeah, no, I have no comments. Just wanted to see um, a quick update. Thank you guys for providing that. Anything else for my colleagues? Yeah, any thank closing? you, Bonnie. Thank you. Are there any closing comments from my colleagues? And then we'll, uh, I'll turn a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have, I have a quick, quick update. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It may save you next month's meeting. Um, we have had some conversation with the USPS. Um, they've indicated they don't think that the two proposals are viable for them. I asked for a written, um, you know, comment from them. So if those two are not viable, you may not be seeing the presentation. And so the board, the board will be seeing that item back at the main meeting, but just as an FYI. All right, thank you. We have a motion and we have a second. Oh, there's another one. All right, go ahead, Ms. Kerfin. Let's just sorry, I need signatures from all of you. Yes, so. we can we can thank handle you. that afterwards. Oh. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. This meeting is adjourned. Have a good night.